So at what point are you supposed to take them off the planet for when you take the blood off the planet? Uh, shit. It's, I don't, you know, it's a look. It's a look they should have. It should be, you know, they should look right. They should be uh, firm, you know, fluffy but firm. And they should be real, uh, they should be, you know, like, sticky as fuck. And right. You should be able to really smell them. Like, if you squeeze the bud, that should just, just right. fill up the area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it stays on your fingers. It's, you know, it's, you pinch a bud, you know, like a little one. It ain't got to be one of the big ones. Mm-hmm. It's a little one. But, um, Do you need something? Uh, or an ashtray. It's a little thingy. You got that little red ashtray there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah, man. How was y'all's week? What did you guys get into? I don't even know. What day is it? Target. I'm all discombobulated. Trying to remember. Uh, I had two shows on Saturday. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah, How were the yeah. shows? Where? Uh, one of my homies hit me when I was on the way to uh, Whittier. And he was like, hey, man. Uh, what's up with you? I'm on the way to a show. Oh, okay, that's what's up. Where, where at? I'm like, in Whittier. He's like, oh, man. Whittier, dude. So I was out there earlier this week. Huh? Man, he said, you know, I was out there with the kids playing, you know, he, he coaches kids and mm-hmm. basketball and, and all kind of shit, taekwondo, all kind of shit. Mm-hmm. And he said that uh, some dude ran up to his car and started stood in front of his car when he was leaving had a black dog on a rope and nigger with the sign nigger on the dog and he was like yeah yeah he's like he said you know it took the life of me not to just like right. straight smash and run him over and, right. you know i know this homie the homie that was telling me this i was like man you man, come a long way homie right he's like because you know the kids was there i was just i just had to like Bite the bullet, the way, right? but you know, he says at the same time, I'm like, nigga, you don't need all of that. This is Whittier. I don't even, I don't even want to be in this boring motherfucker right. like that, nigga. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't fuck about being out here. Right. He's like, so I'm telling, you, be careful. I was like, okay, okay, good. Thanks for the heads up, mm-hmm. but I'm actually on the way there now. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right, right, right. You know, <laughs> right. <laughs> about to do a show. Thanks. I know it's going to be predominantly Mexican. Because mm-hmm. that's where I don't care. I, I do all of these. So I'm like getting all my fucking, you know, all my material, running it through my head. Like, damn, boy, I hope, you know, because it only takes one drunk drunk person that could get a kid. You know, if it's, if, it, if it's all like that, damn, who wants to? But fuck it, I'm going to get my bread and, and keep my word. I got exactly. a show, nigga. Right. So... <laughs> I'm running all my Latino material through my head. Like, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna say this joke. I'm gonna, you can't. I'm gonna make everybody laugh. I can't wait. So I get there. He's like, yeah, they're right in there. They're right in there, this room here. So I open the room, and it's all Africans. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So it's a benefit for an African <laughs> school, you know. <laughs> Right. So that means. I uh, mean, all West Africans, right. Senegal, the Congo, everybody's up in there. And I was like, uh, <laughs> yes, my tamale jokes are out the window. <laughs> Wait, so but, did uh, you have to be more clean because of the, the yo, educators? Yo, and all I that, was or? all set to be clean at the oh, last. Like, the, God, because it's kids. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's kids, man. I'm remember, like, okay, kids fuck. Too. Who, you know, doing a clean show is, is not a problem. Mm-hmm. But you do have to adjust. I mean, you, you got, but you got to adjust anyway. Right. It's material for, for different crowds, different material work better. Right. Simple as that. 
Mm-hmm. So I was like, man, I looked, I did a scan on how many kids was in there. <laughs> it was only like about four kids, and it was with their parents. And how old were they? Shit, ranging from like 12 to like okay. 14. Yeah, you're about to hear it. Yeah, you can get the you, you yeah. can, hey, it, it. Parents, you're gonna have a lot of discussion right, <laughs> and after this show. to do on your way home. And, I, and my man Narciso, Narciso is a funny dude. I, I think he opened it up lovely, cracked the seal, and he was like, you know, uh, he's he's a he's a he's a he's like a gay comedian. Halloween's coming up. It's my favorite holiday because clearly that's, I'm gay. It's what we do. <laughs> Ladies, um, if you're not sexy all year long. A costume's really not gonna help you that one day. You can't just be sexy on October 31st and be like, I'm sexy. No, you have a front butt and shit. No, I have one too. It's tucked in right now though. I think it's a hard body funny. Uh-huh. And that motherfucker, he said, well, I'm gonna be me and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Kids or no right. kids, I'm not changing. I'm like, hey, what well, do you? Oh, we crack that motherfucker, break that seal. Uh-huh. And he did. He went out there and shook him up. Guy, he's hilarious. Uh-huh. This nigga, we got, oh, hey man, dude is funny, man. But he cracked it. My man Jerry Garcia killed it. And my man um, uh, Darren Carter, Darren Carter, Darren Carter, the party starter. An NFL football player was arrested for 500 pounds of marijuana. Ooh, wait, now that's the Super Bowl. <laughs> Derek Carter is the homie. That is a funny motherfucker. Always, that's a dude, I've known Derek Carter over 20 years. And that's a dude that is consistently funny as fuck. Awesome. A lot of people don't know him, but a lot of people do. The people that do know him, they will agree. That dude is consistent. I, He's just got a, that kind of personality. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was like, I wanted to stay for the whole show, but I was like, yo, man, I got another show. Right. Can I go up first? And they was like, all right, cool. And I was like, god damn, here we go. <laughs> Africa, Africa, what am I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Went up and rocked the fuck out of it. And I, I said, you know, I said my Nigerian attorney joke. Mm-hmm. It like that. I said, you know, my shit. Free yeah. love shit. Right. We rocked it. Awesome. And then I left, got halfway to the freeway to get to the next show and realized I left my glasses at that spot. Oh, yeah. Head please. crack, head crack. You and the glasses. Fucking glasses. And I was like, man, I'm going to leave those motherfuckers. But then I was like, man, fuck that. Who wants to go through that? Right. right. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's a hassle. Them out. <laughs> Get the little <laughs> Yeah, all of that Fuck that, man I went back It was right there Under the DJ's table Oh, perfect So I shot out And went to my other spot With my guys um, I did a short With these dudes mm-hmm. Oh, okay Yeah, those cats The short is called Bucket And it's It's, 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 a, finished, it's finished They aired it uh, That night I gotta give them a shout out, man, because these dudes, this was a, a real, I did a show with these guys uh, maybe about a year ago, and they were, um, it was just, you know, they, they I, I, I think they saw me on 5150, but they're comedians. Mm-hmm. Is it, it was, on YouTube? Or on it's going to be up on YouTube. Right now, they're, they're going to, I think they're entering it in some festivals. Mm-hmm. Cause the short is dope. It's a it's a sketch, but it it ended up being a short, and it ended up being dope as hell. It's dope. Joel Joseph was the was the director of it. This dude Joel Joseph cast a bucket with my homie Johnny Mac, and my other homie uh, Drake's cousins are funny. That's my homie Marcus. <laughs> Those two dudes thought of it. It's just a you know it was a a, a group of a young comedians that are active. Right. They're not talking about doing shit. They're doing it. They're mm-hmm. jumping to it and they're doing it. They was doing a sketch and they asked me would I would I be down to be down? I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, because your energy is always doing it. You're right. It was or, or also my man Howard. What's up, Howard? That's that's another dude in this sketch. Funny as fuck. And also my man Roger uh, Lopez, another funny comedian. All these dudes, it was it was just dope. 
right. because we did the show in their backyard. Oh. In, in uh, Echo Park. Mm -hmm. So the backdrop is the cliff with, wow. with the lake in the background. Right. Mm -hmm. And this was on a deck. And this was like in the neighborhood. I think they charged like 10 bucks a head and uh -huh. they sold out the spot. <laughs> oh, wow. And it was, That's you know, cool. They had it, or they had it uh, catered with some edibles. Uh -huh. and, cool. and then they played the, the uh, sketch on a sheet. They hung it up uh -huh. on the wall and, and blasted it up there. And, it was it was that dope. Was nice. yes. Yeah, do it, it was do real it. dope. Yeah, just going for it, like yeah, you, just, know, you know, do do, do it really yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah I that's mean, cool. you know, that's that's my spirit. That's what it. That's how how we get down. So fuck it, whatever it takes, let's do it. It's, it's good. I like it because you know, shit. Thirty years in the game, this shit gets old. Mm -hmm. Unless. You get the energy of the of of taking part mm -hmm. with people who it's not old to. Right. right. You know these dudes. It's not old to them. It's all new, and it's it may it makes me step my game up. Like right. yo, it's you, infectious. yeah, because because you don't who you, you can't sit back and say I've been doing this thirty years, motherfucker. Right. right. Yo, you lose, man. And oh. and it, you, seeing them use the new technology and put it in in play, it, that's another step your game and up. And that's and so you dope get fed because by these that motherfuckers energy. don't think twice. No, because there's it's, it's, it's it is second nature to it them. It is they, second nature. They've to grown them. up with the gadgets. Man, you know? me and my old comedian friends be like, where, <laughs> who's gonna bring the paper so the script? Could be printed out. Right. Right. Well, I ain't got no money for ink, so I damn sure ain't buying no paper. <laughs> right, you know, right. It's, we, right. We're, it's, it's a different time. It's, it's, about a different a different time. it's about doing it because it's so easy to do. And, you know, the quality. It's, yeah, that's is, the biggest thing. And, yeah. but here's the thing the shit they got now. The quality is the same as big, huge budget shit. Exactly. They got, you know, they're, yeah. they're boys, young cameramen, young soundmen, young director, Joel Joseph. He's directed some stuff, got a couple of awards. You know, two comedians came up with an idea. That's my man Johnny Mac mm -hmm. and Marcus. They was like, well, maybe we could do it. And it was just a light script, right. you know. And we did that shit. And I can't wait for y'all to see it. Cause Looking it's, forward to it. It's, I mean, it's cool to see yourself. Mm-hmm. It's another feeling to see yeah. yourself, and it's genuinely funny. Yeah, right. That's I genuinely laughed at the wrong cut last week. That, yo, for I real. Genuinely, was uh, and I'm like, and I always, I'm like, Freeze can do anything. Uh -huh. so I'm like, people don't know. That. You know what? Wait, that's, okay, that's, wait. Speaking of doing it, let right. us go forth and start the show because this is a big show. It's this a big is show. a big show. It's a big show. Let you go ahead and tell why it's a big show. This is a big show. Well, first off, welcome. Yay. Yay. Welcome to Freeze welcome Talks. To the yes. First. One year. Yeah. Boom. One year. Mm, we have mm, done mm, a mm. full year every week of shows. This is, I don't know what. Four no, shows a month. For, four shows a month. Yeah. For 12 months. Consistently. Boom. Boom. Duh, that's we could keep doing it. We just said fuck it. And that's yeah. why I'm saying it's like it, it's always the doing it has never been the issue. It's it's just how technology changes and people can embrace it and use it. And like you said, quality it's accessible in ways that it never was before. And even when we were doing stuff before, yeah, you know, we were true. making use of the of the technology. But this is well, look, let me tell you guys what the before was because this is a year. Well, you got to start start. We did start. We did introduce everybody. Oh. It's one year. It's, the, it's like we've been here for a year. We got to acknowledge. I'm, all right. I'm your host. Freeze Love. Welcome Yay. to Freeze Talk. I'm a comedian. We have our co-host, Miss Linda Hamblin Denton, writer extraordinaire, Yay. Emmy winning. Da, da, da. All right. We also have our laughers crew. We have... The master oh, laugher, yeah. Mr. Race Didn't, yeah, also yeah, director yeah. of Freeze Talk. We have our journeyman laugher, yeah. Mr. Dominique Brown, back also the producer. House, and, back in his and house. Extraordinaire yeah. of Freeze Talks. Yay. So, here's the deal. Yes, it's been a year for y'all. 
<laughs> and us with y'all. And us with y'all. And we love y'all. <laughs> we love y'all, man. But you got to understand, we have known each other for, man, what? Is... Well, if it's 20 plus for me, since I've, you know, well, me, way more me and Master Laugh and Race have known each other since high school. Right. And Dominique, I met the same time I met you. Mm-hmm. And this was. 20, that's 20 plus. It's 20, that's 20 plus, plus, 20 years, plus ago. years. Easy. Because Little Race is 20. Right. Little Race is 23 and... It's about 21 years. 21. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's crazy. And this this podcast is the end result. Is the end result. It's not the beginning of us working together. It's kind of like the latest venture of this crew. Yeah. And uh, the first thing we did when I first... you know, Well, look, man. I've been doing this comedy stuff since 1992 and it's crazy how I even came you know even though me and Race were in school together you know I hadn't seen you since high school literally, literally you know and I was out mm-hmm. and living life I seen you doing stand up <laughs> but hadn't seen you run into you at all right oh man this is my dude Keon what up Keon this is you calling but <laughs> I gotta send you to the uh Damn, I gotta hit you in a minute, homie. That's He'll the understand. producer of, of the album. That's cool. Oh, yay. yay! Hope he was calling. Me. I know he's calling some good news. Right, right. Anyway, you but. So you're I, saying, um, yeah, how I, you, you guys know, have known each started, other since high school? We started, in, yeah, since high school. And we went on and lived lives, you know? Mm-hmm. We didn't, we weren't, we weren't necessarily buddies. Right. We knew a lot of the same people in different circles our mm-hmm. circles overlapped a lot yeah just because of the region of the world where we're from beautiful Altadena beautiful Pasadena too Monrovia Dewarty this is you know these are the little areas that we bump into people we grow up with okay right. so that's how it was with race you you, you see somebody hey, whatever happened to race oh man he's he's a cameraman mm-hmm. so yeah he said yeah man he's, he's doing camera a sports camera Oh, oh, oh I was like, what on earth is happening? I was like, oh, I have, I have my, um, my surprise. Oh, shit. Well, I wake up. <laughs> Damn, Keon, what does he say? Voicemail. But keep going, so you, you guys know each other from that. Yeah. We we uh we know each other from high school and we was just kind of bumping in and meanwhile I was doing movies man I was you know in the movie I mean I've all it's funny because my my wife had asked me she was like what do you think is your favorite stuff because I've been in a lot of stuff some big some little and you know I think House Party three of course was one of my favorites because it's my first time. I mean, this ain't no damn Benny Hines, you know what I'm saying? Look, man, this is all we want. Some chicken wings, hot dogs, and a case of forties. You get that? First of all, you need to calm the fuck down and go gargle, Funky. Man, my name is Stinky. Stinky, all right? Well, stinky, funky, smell hella bad. It's all the same. Fuck all of that. Nigga, your name is Funky because you come up in here smelling like butt crack now. Yo, squash all that, man. All I'm talking about, the food better be on. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, look at this nigga, Mr. Baller, Mr. High Roller, Mr. Flashy fucking money. Well, since you got it like that, punk, pay a nigga now. You got my food now? Or maybe, do you have my food I'm now? Saying, fuck all the dumb shit. Let me tell you something. You don't come in this motherfucker making no goddamn demands. Then we'll fuck around and throw your punk ass on the grill. Straight make some barbecue bitch. No, fuck all that. Nigga, bake all three of they punk asses and make three bitch pie now. Look, why don't we just give him all the money now, okay? Yo, forget that kid, man. The original deal was a deposit. I refuse to be intimidated by these three losers. That's bullshit, man. It's just bullshit. Yeah, especially like some midget like you, you hairy bastard. Kick it, cuz. Look here, motherfucker. I will kick you in your nuts and make your jaw swell. You think you won't? You think you won't, you punk ass niggas, huh? Look, look, just give Yo, them kid. Money. Look, look, okay? Kick in, you just trick. have the food there. Thank you. Yo, the Come food on. better be on. Nigga, your sister better be your on. Your mother's on. Hey, your grandmama's straight on. The first, that was the so excitement. Many Right, mm-hmm. and it was the excitement. You, you know, it's, it's um, you really don't know what's going on. You don't. Know. It's like, yeah, I'm in a movie, but you don't know what that means. You don't. And back then, movies were, you know, it wasn't like now. You know, just mm-hmm. hey, yeah, I'm on a movie. Check me out on Netflix. Yeah, I'll watch you tomorrow. 
It wasn't like that. It was like, <laughs> shit. Yeah, you had to like, wait till this shit yeah. came out. And... Two year process, Easy. you know? Mm-hmm. So I was doing all kinds of stuff. I was in Dangerous Minds with Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. You know, I had a great scene with Michelle Pfeiffer that ended up on the floor. But damn. They, they used the tail end of it. I was like, damn, that's cool. But the key was you did the scene. Yeah, you rocked that scene. shit and vibed and, that know, shit with you, her. You don't. Man, I was in Blank Man. Mm-hmm. That, my whole thing was cut out of Blank Man completely. Cut out. I love that story. Yeah, but that story was cool, though. That was a hell of a story. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was all different experiences. And then, you know. Coyote Ugly. Coyote Ugly. Coyote Ugly was, man, that shit there. Let me tell you, Coyote Ugly, I auditioned like a motherfucker for this role, right? Like a fucking, like three different times. Three, you know, first it was a pre-read. They're like, you know what, we're going to call you back. I want the casting director to see this. Boom, casting director like, this, he's great. This is great. You know, will you come back for producers and director? <laughs> yeah, you gotta convince. You know, yes. man, I went through the whole audition process, got the gig. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Yo, you're gonna be working three weeks. Ah. You're like the body girl to all of these models, and you're the bodyguard at the club, and they confide mm-hmm. in you, and you're you're like a gentle giant. You know, it was like real. It was written out lovely, right? Uh-oh. Oh man, I show up to the first day. <laughs> Uh-oh. This motherfucker is, is take me to my trailer. Nice. <sighs> this is a big budget film, man. Nice. Berkheimer film, film. exactly. Shit is, I'm, I'm in there. I got a true Rayler. Rayler. Oh, would, you like, uh, would you like something out of Paul my fridge? Paul Farmer. Got a fruit basket. Got TV in there. I got the sound system. A, a shower in my trailer. This is an A-list trailer. I'm like, yo, I've never had, this is, this is fly, man. Right. I'm going over my lines, and they, say, they come in and say, hey, freeze. No. I'm like, oh, what? fuck no. Yeah. no. <laughs> so there's been a huge script change. What? Yeah, well, they did a rewrite, and basically your this whole segment has been wiped. What? Wow. Yeah, you're still going to get paid for the three weeks, but... Uh, they're just gonna use you in one scene today, Aww. and there's been some some uh <laughs> some character changes, some changes in the script. I'm like, oh, really? She's like, here you are. I'm like, it's like, yeah. it's like a half a page. Yeah, I went from like this thick to something to hand you like this, something to hand you like this. like what? And I'm looking, I'm like. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he's like, where am so I? The, you know what? They're they're actually gonna call you to set right now. I was like, all right. <laughs> this they're gonna shoot this scene now. Is yeah. So I'm like, it's fuck. I'm shaking. looking as I'm walking. What? Oh, that was you. Oh my goodness! I was like, oh. I'm feeling. I was like, is it me? Okay, go ahead. That was earthquake. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, I was right. like, Jeez. okay, let us all be alert. So I'm walking and I'm walking with the PA. I'm like, um. This says that I say ID, please. <laughs> and she's like, I don't, I don't have anything to do with that. Here's the director, and he's like, Hey, freeze, man, dude, I'm so sorry. This has nothing to do with you. You, you're, you were awesome. I couldn't wait to work with you, but um, unfortunately, there's been a whole story change, and they've added a chef and. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, look, hey, maybe I can be the chef. Right, 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 I, can. Right. I can do that. I, can I don't do have that. to be a security guard. The chefs are fat. Right. You know? I can do it. <laughs> He's, I'm like, he says, did you get the screen chair? I'm like, yeah. It, uh, it says, um, ID, please. He said, yeah, that's it. That's all you're going to say. I was like, do you mind if I add a little? He says, you know what? Actually, I don't even know if you need to say. I'm like, no. <laughs> 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 like, Let me say, ID, please. ID, please, is fine. Right. 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 ID, please, is what it is. Oh, ID, yeah. please. Yeah. How'd you say, ID, please? Oh, man, I was trying all kind of ways. <laughs> ID, please. ID, please. ID, 
please? <laughs> I was like, how am I going to make the best of this? Right. Uh, and so I was like, fuck that, man. I'm going to have something. Good evening, cut. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, just walk through, because it's, it's really not now. Just, just walk in, because the scene takes place inside. Oh. Yeah. I got it. He's like, just, just back to one. ID, please. <laughs> <laughs> they got their IDs out. ID, please. Fuck y'all. Now I'm looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you cut. This, is, this scene ain't gonna drag. Right. Oh, fuck it. Went back to my trailer. Just looking like, damn, I thought I was gonna be in here a week, three weeks. Right. They knocked on the door. Hey, Freeze, we gotta, we gotta clear this trailer. <laughs> Could you take a picture of me in here? <laughs> sure. Sure, I get a pull right from wardrobe. <laughs> That's it. That's oh it. God. That was it, man. Do you have the picture yeah, still? Yeah, the picture got long. long I had a up. gang of, see, you know, when you go through shit like divorces and baby's mama's leaving, a lot of memorabilia just, just gets disappears. burnt the fuck up. Right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it goes up in smoke. Set on fire. Yes, yes. Thrown out of window. Yes, yes. into trash. Given to bums. Yes, <laughs> yes. exactly. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's yeah. rough. So it's okay, rough so life. from big so budget there, movies. So there, from there, I mean, then you know, like I was in, um, I was in fucking Kirby Enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. was another one that got fucking cut the fuck out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dope ass audition with Larry David. Yes. We were flowing like motherfucking like a waterfall. That shit was lovely. I That's, believe it. You it too. Was I can great. see you we flow with him. Mm-hmm. Scene comes, boom! It's me, Larry David, Wanda Sykes. I'm killing this shit. Like, we did, like, something like 16 takes. Man. Each take was something different. Man. Because they, they were just doing it for fun. Like, wow. just laughing. I call fucking uh, uh, Larry David. Because see, in the scene, it's the, the Crazy Eyes Killer episode. Mm-hmm. And in the scene, I'm supposed to be a party goer that makes fun of Larry David and Wanda Sykes. He's walking Wanda to her car because she twisted her ankle. So they look like a couple. Right. But I'm a patron that can't get in because there's a long line. So they're like, look, all we want you to do is fire insults. <laughs> Just fire oh, insults. Oh, you're her. like, yes. yes. What? <laughs> and they walk up and I'm like, whoa, well, look who's here. If it isn't Ichabod Crane and <laughs> Tina Turner. <laughs> Bow every fucking <laughs> wow. wow. Well, well, well. If it isn't Chicken Little and Claudine, <laughs> I'm smashing. <laughs> Chicken Little and Claudine. I'm letting them have it so bad, the whole fucking crew is laughing. <laughs> like, they had to cut a few times because the crew is laughing. Okay, laughing. okay. Yeah. Jeff uh, Garland. Who was there is, is in tears. Laugh. Mm-hmm. This shit is going great. Big up to Jonathan Harris. Thank you, Jonathan. You got me the the, the right. audition. Mm-hmm. He was first AD. <coughs> he was first AD. Uh, I got the audition. I killed the audition. I'm in there. This shit is going great. Huh. <laughs> Waiting on the episode. It's season four. Hey, it's season four. It's coming out. Jonathan calls me. He said, hey, man. <laughs> Yeah. I just want to let you know, homie, that uh, you killed it. They played it at the uh, rap party. <laughs> they, they was playing it, the, everyone at the rap party, the whole crew, everybody, all the producers, they were in tears. You killed it. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, they could have invited you to the damn rap party. You know, was, I, I think I may have been invited, but I was working on something. Oh, it, was, okay. it wasn't like no diss or nothing. Oh, it was okay. all love. Okay. But he said, but unfortunately. They had to cut your scene. Like the whole thing. That whole thing got cut because Martin Scorsese, Larry David bumped into Martin Scorsese. And Martin Scorsese said, Man, I, I, I can't. I'd love to be on your show, man. He's like, Really? He's like, Well, how long are you in town? He's like, I'm in town for the like, next three days. He's like, You know what? We can get you a cameo. We're shooting now. We just come down. 
He's like, oh, great. And that three days ended up being like two weeks, and they changed the whole entire right. thing. Oh. So, you know, yeah, I lost to Martin Scorsese, motherfucker. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Right. I lose to a lot of the greats. <laughs> a lot of the greats. A lot of the greats. <laughs> yes. But, you know, that, that brought me back, you know, to, uh, I mean, that shit, I was in this movie. It's, each movie has a fucking, man, I was in, <laughs> oh, gosh, Heat. Heat? You were in Heat? Yeah. No, I wasn't in <laughs> Heat. <laughs> I mean, you were supposed to be in Heat. Man, that shit you was had- down between me and Eddie Griffin. Oh, and Ricky Harris and Tone Loke. Oh my God! Wow, who got it? I didn't see he. <laughs> Ricky Harris and Tone Loke. Ricky Lope. Harris and oh. Tone Loke. Damn. But hey, this is the motherfucking game, man. I'm just, yeah. you know, it's like this is all I'm saying. Reason this is, believe me, I'm talking about all this shit for a purpose. You know, I'll give you another one. Fucking um, loving a bullet. This shit here, nigga. I know this supposed to be a motherfucking man and everything, but I don't know nobody that be doing this shit blatantly to niggas. To me, it look like this nigga straight playing. If it's my motherfucking time, you know what I mean? My motherfucking money. I'm just saying, this shit real unprofessional. Goddamn right, it ain't professional. Late motherfucker. I'm sick of this shit. Trying to play me like I'm some kind of motherfucking mark or something. This shit's real disrespectful, Frenchy. Goddamn right, it's disrespectful. But I tell you what. I bet you I get me some motherfucking respect today. Man, what the fuck, man? Man, you fucked up, Bishop. Do you know what the fuck you just did, nigga? This motherfucker's Damien Wiles, nigga, man. Do you know who Damien Wiles is? Motherfucking head enforcer of all the goddamn enforcers. So what you saying? I ain't being professional? Mm-hmm. Be- great movie, right? That was a great, great movie. But the dude, Ben Ramsey, shout out to Ben Ramsey. Ben Ramsey was this cat. He wrote that movie. He wrote a few movies. Ben Ramsey was the dude for a minute on all these action spy movies mm-hmm. in Hollywood, punching everything mm-hmm. up. Let's get the fuck out of here, man. God damn it. Let's get the fuck in. Mm-hmm. And um, he did this movie, and the movie was going to be big, man. It was going to be big. And it was a dope movie. And I, it was like the first movie that I had where I really was able to flex. Malik Bishop. No, that's his name. Malik Bishop. Scared? Hell, motherfucking no, I ain't scared of that nigga, right? <laughs> Hey, hey, look, look, you know me, Mr. Wiles. I always told the line, this big Frenchie. Scared of that motherfucker? Well, what, you, hey, look, I could hand you the motherfucker's head on a platter if you want, it ain't no. Oh, okay, oh, y'all gonna handle it, okay, shit. Hey, well, all right. Okay, then. Motherfucker stepped up to the big leagues now. Hey, nigga. You watch it? You watch it? Don't look at me. Look out there, homie. The movie was said to be big, and it was starring my brother Tretch. What up, Tretch? One love, Tretch. But then Tretch did another movie before this movie came out where Tretch did the full frontal nude. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He had to show his Bozak. He showed his Bozak to the world. Yeah. <laughs> and kicked the motherfucking chair out from under this film. That's like no. It was like ah uh, yeah, we were gonna open it. How many theaters? Now we're not. We are gonna do a run at the Pussycat Theater. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's fucked up. No, you know oh, that um, uh-huh. this is the film industry. They don't let men get fully frontal nude. That's that's when it becomes a porno. Uh, right. right, exactly. <laughs> but that's what can. Oh, Michael McCanns. What up, Mike McCanns? Sorry, homie. You got that big ass Irish name. I was like McShilly. McShilly. McKennedy. Michael McCanns and Ben Ramsey. Mm-hmm. They directed that. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of cats in that movie, man. A lot of stars. The, uh, the Blue Power Ranger was in that movie, man. Oh my god. Yeah, I forget homie's name, but damn, I, shame on me. Bro. I went to the screening with you, and I just remember. 
Frenchie Davis was the number one employer of downwardly mobile black youths in the neighborhood. The area underneath the 6th Street Bridge was the corporate headquarters, and he was always looking for new executives. If I say I want a motherfucker smoke, that's just what the fuck I want. A motherfucker smoke. You think you got the motherfucking nuts to put a hole in a motherfucker? Who? Oh. My nigga Bishop. Use a bad motherfucker, boy. Motherfucking Terminator in this motherfucker. Play the character Frenchie yeah. Davis. Man, the fucking then we had another movie. Another movie that was gonna be big, gonna be huge. Anna Nicole Smith. I'm in a movie with Anna Nicole Smith, man. The fucking um Wasabi tuna. Yep. Oh, wasabi, wasabi tuna. tuna. Yeah, that right. Hey, that's a straight security guard from Barney's. Oh, there's his partner. See, I told you they were gay. He is? What? We're not gay. We're DEA. That's right. And we got a major mess out there, and it's all your fault. That's right. I guess we're not going to make it to West Hollywood after all. I guess you're not. Everybody, yeah, that yeah. shit was big. That shit was gonna be big, but uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> it, it was until it wasn't. <laughs> I was in a movie with fucking the Robert Townsend directed. Which Jackie's one? back with um, with uh, what's her name? Uh, dope ass. Uh, she's the mama. She's the mama of Black Hollywood. Oh, um, she played the mama. Yes, fucking uh, what's girl, love got you? A girl. A uh, girl. Why can't I here? Here it is, uh, Jennifer Lewis. Jennifer Lewis. And I know you think, how could you forget Jennifer Lewis? Simple, motherfucker. Yeah. I smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the, uh, okay, so you move well, on. Jennifer into, Lewis. Hold yeah. on. Jennifer mm -hmm. Lewis. I love her. so fucking dope. She really is. On that movie, directed by Robert Townsend, that was a dope movie because the crew was my homie, the Harris, Eli Harris, his son, Wendell. They was all on that crew. Mm -hmm. And Robert Townsend, I worked with that dude, and everybody was in this movie, man. Every fucking... That was a big, was a big movie. Yeah. Um, Whoopi was in it. Whoopi was in it. Uh, uh, let's see, Tom Arnold, Patty Austin, Loretta Devine, uh, David Hyde Pierce. Uh, Isabel Sanford, Joe Beth Williams, yep. uh, Richard Lawson, Johnny Bra Yeah. Freeze Love. Right. Wait, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm just, of course, we know you were in it. Yeah, but you got to say it like okay. you read it. And, <laughs> of course, Freeze Love. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I played it. I played it. The, the cast dude. goes on forever. Forever. Everyone, that was a dope movie. Wow. That movie didn't get the shine that it should have. Right. And I'll go out and say it. Because a black man did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a, okay, mockumentary, 60s diva Jackie Wilson. Her ancestors were George Washington slaves. Um, <laughs> Jennifer Wilson is our leading lady with an impeccable, incredible cast. And basically, so it's a mockum doc mockumentary about her um, finding out that she's the ancestor of George Washington. Right. One of the slaves. Rather. And the thing is, I played, she was a, a diva, Af so she had Af fans Af and shit. And I played a fan named Larry. And, and <laughs> Man, when she wrote this song, take your Jerry Curl and go. And I used to have a Jerry Curl. And my woman loved me. But I can hear this song right now. Take your Jerry Curl and go. Just drip, drip, drip on. Yeah. Jennifer Lewis, man, she wrote she wrote me a card, Aww. you know, thanking me for being a part of the cast. Told me yeah, the card said I did a wonderful job, you know, just what an honor it was to work with me and on, you know, the best of luck to my crew. Just 100% super duper class, mm -hmm. super duper professional, mm -hmm. you know, off the chain. Just good people, man. I, I thank God that I got to work with her, man. That's awesome. You know, but... And I look forward to you working with her again. Hey, man, you know what? You never know. Exactly. You never know. I just we, see her being somebody you could really riff with. Like, because she's she so... She goes, man. She goes She is so man. cool. Again, that's yeah. another person that, you know, if it wasn't for the internet, mm -hmm, you wouldn't mm -hmm. really see the real talent. Tell, because exactly. Hollywood has a... Uh, 
I mean, look, man, it is what it is. Tight cast. I play thug number one, thug number two, thug number three, big honcho, <laughs> uh, security. Uh, you know, those are the roles that Hollywood's going to drive me to. Right. You know, so it's hard to break out. Mm-hmm. And that is why, which comes to full circle, I'm a, you know, all of these films, my wife said, what is your two favorite, what do you, what do you think is your favorite one? And I have to say, I think my favorite film or favorite projects were the two that happened simultaneously. Yeah. And that That's was crazy. Showtime, that's Robert De Niro and Eddie Murphy. I'm in scenes acting back and forth with these dudes. Motherfucker, kiss my ass. I've already, I've already had a dream come true. Mm-hmm. I can't complain about shit. If I don't get nothing else, man, I can't, I cannot honestly complain about shit. Because that was unbelievable for me. Yeah. I was in that shit. I was in that shit to the point they had to physically cut my a whole bunch of me out <laughs> right. because I overshadowed the lead. Yeah. <laughs> Not the lead, but the lead criminal. Cool. I was right. in the criminal right. crew. Right. Okay? And, yo, man, it was... I, I, I got to say in the movie... Showtime. Right. <laughs> the movie's called Showtime, and I say Showtime. Right? Because if you see the movie, Eddie Murphy plays this character who's doing a show called Showtime, and they're both cops. Robert De Niro's a serious cop. Eddie Murphy's an actor who is being a cop. To it's a crazy movie, a cool, you know, funny movie. A lot of people in that movie. To the point. A motherfucker, if you were not a major star, this is how I went with that movie. Because the other movie I'm about to talk about, we were doing at the same time. But this movie, Showtime, man, yo, you don't understand. I'm fucked up physically to this day because I got fucked up on that movie. Mm-hmm. This was a scene, and I tell, I don't even tell this, and I'm not. Saying something, you know, it doesn't matter. It's so long ago. It's mm-hmm. nothing. I'm not trying to get at a uh, legal angle. That's not why I'm bringing this up. But let me tell you, young actors, something, man. Yeah, this this movie was high energy. Okay, there's a scene where our characters, the bad guys, we got these burp guns, these hell of a shotguns to shoot. Like fucking like uh, automatics, like do 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 do, but they're shotguns, and this is all live shit. It's not real shit, but right. it's it's still yeah, blanks and shit coming off. That it is some smoke and some heat. Right. All right. Now, mm-hmm. in this movie, we're we're doing because of my size, my stature, you know who I am. They're like, look, man, we're gonna shoot as much as we can with you. And then, you know, because it's, it's scenes, facial scenes. And then, we get, you know, I had a stunt double, too. So a lot of the shit was like, hey, we're going to do this. Uh, you down? I was like, yeah, 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 I'm down. Nah, motherfucker. <laughs> You're not a stunt man. I'm not a stunt man. Right. You're not a stunt man. All of that, I'm going to do my own stunts. <laughs> no. I'm fucked up right now. Right. Because I did my own stunt. Mm-hmm. In that movie, there's a scene where we're hanging out. I'm hanging out of the driver's side of this car. We just robbed a Brinks truck. We throw all this money in the, in the, in the trunk of this Benz right, or a BMW. I'm in the back seat. We got a driver. We got someone on the passenger seat and someone on the other side. We are mashing through alleys. We're doing this, you know, at different parts, right? This is this is going down. The whole back window gets blown out. This crazy ass jelly glass is like it looks real as fuck. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing all of this, right? So in this one particular scene, I'm hanging out the left side. Of the passenger in the of the driver's side, but in the back seat, shooting down like this. Mm-hmm. 
All right, the car is coming down. We turn into an alley and skirt out. As we come down, that car swerves in the back tire. I'm hanging out the car. That's just it. <laughs> Honestly, I think I fractured a rib or some shit. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I did because to this day, I'm fucked up. I get pains to where I'm like, and I know it's that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's that same feeling. Mm -hmm. Right. And they were like, oh shit, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm cool, man. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you gotta do it again. I'll do it again. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the type who's gonna be like, yeah, I could have been. Mm -hmm. Pay me, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. I knew I wasn't no stunt man. Right. I knew the risk I was taking. Mm -hmm. Honestly, as a grown motherfucking adult, I can't play like I didn't. Right. For some bread. Right. I'm not that dude. And about the opportunity that you wanted and to about come the, from it. And it was just like, yeah, yeah, I wanted, you know, you wanted, you want this, like, yeah. yo, fuck that, nigga. How come, come here crippled them more? <laughs> Hello. Tell me, I'm in, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. Yo, right. I was fucked, exactly. Are you right. sure you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm cool, man. But I was fucked up. Mm -hmm. I was fucked up. So never to again. To the point, the homie picked me up. He's like, damn, homie, what's up? You, you look fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you so glad you in the car, too. I was you like, no, nah, I'm cool, man. I, you know, I'm cool. I had a little, you know, all part of the gig, nigga. It's part of the gig. He's like, shit, nigga. <laughs> you look fucked up, homie. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, I'm cool. I'm cool. But I was fucked up. Right. And then I think that whole, you know, the whole movie, I killed it though. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a lot going on. It was, there was a scene at the end where we're at a party. Where there's a shootout between me, the, between the main character boss, I forget his name, dope ass actor. He's a director mm -hmm. yeah. from uh, from Mexico, from Mexico City. Cool dude, man. Good. He knows film. He knows his mm -hmm. shit. And he was, you know. He mm -hmm. was like the boss, mm -hmm. and I was his number one henchman. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, you know, I'm in this movie. It was crazy. Pedro. What is it? Pedro. Pedro Damian. Right. Pedro Damian. Yeah. What up, Pedro? Que paso? Yo, that dude is cool as fuck. His whole family's cool. But, you know, he's, in, he's the main dude. Mm -hmm. So it's me, my man, God rest his soul, Merlin, Merlin Santana. Santana. Yeah. And me and Merlin are tripping, you know, because we're, we're on this movie. And I'm like, so you're Dominican? <laughs> He's like, yeah. I'm like, you speak Spanish. He's like, fluently. He's like, so you're not? <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're not? I'm like, no. <laughs> He's like, you don't speak Spanish? I'm like, un poquito. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know. We, we worked this film together. We got scenes together. We got a scene where we beat up the fucking um, the Brinks truck driver. They cut a lot of heads out. Yeah, we're torturing the Brinks truck oh. driver to get the information to to the robbery we go to. They cut all of that. And we're just, just that's that robbery. Mm -hmm. All right, but at the premiere of that, I was like sitting there. They premiered it out at that theater in Westwood by UCLA. Mm -hmm. right, right, that's a, right. I love that theater because yeah. that's, that's so Hollywood. That's so Hollywood. That's right. just, dude, this is a drink. This nigga, right. this shit went <laughs> down. I'm right. like, hey, hey, yeah. that's Robert De Niro. This is me, Freeze Love. <laughs> <laughs> that's Sandy Murphy. That's me, Freeze Love. That's Renee Russo. That's me, Freeze Love. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm like, Yo. Me and Merlin sat right next to each other. Right. We watched the whole fucking movie, and I was like, there's one scene after at the gun club at the gun show. Well, we bring in the money, the, it goes bad. We get in a shootout at the gun show, me and a bar. And we're like, me and a bar, so like back to back in a shootout with the whole gun show. 
the director, Tom Day, is like, Freeze, you are fucking dude. I love this shit. You're killing this shit. I'm like, yes. That's what you want to be sad about you when you're doing a movie right. with Robert De Niro, yes, Eddie of Murphy, course. and Nate Russo, and fucking William Shatner, and Kadeem Hardison. Yeah, motherfucker. All of these motherfuckers in that movie. Yeah. So, <laughs> the movie is there. They cut all of that shit out. But I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm like, man. I look at Merlin Santana. I'm like, homie. They cut all of my talking scenes out of this shit. He said, bruh. They cut me completely out. And I was like, damn. Damn. That's right. And you was in it more than me. Mm -hmm. This Hollywood shit is a motherfucker. It really is. Tom Day, the director, he, man, he saw me that night. He said, freeze. Because they cut me out of a scene that I thought was impossible to be cut out. <laughs> yeah. What? They digitally, digi, digitally, digi, like digitized, like click, 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 put click. that shit on the computer and got a motherfucking Photoshop app. <laughs> Erase my motherfucking ass. With you and the cat back there. Man, it was just him. It wasn't no back to back. It went from back to back to a big ass background. <laughs> Yo. Done. Gone. Like, done. And it's crazy because like I'm really there in in the thick of it and then bam, I'm I'm not there. I was standing there. They right. show something else when they come back. There ain't no freeze love there. <laughs> it's my man taking off. I mean, I think they did do something where where Eddie Murphy or Robert, I don't know who one of them shoots. You hear it and then cut back and I'm gone. So it is. But I don't even know if it was. It was just like it's crazy because nigga, I'm like I shot all of that shit. I was there for this. That's like two more days of work. It's right. missing. It's gone. Wow. But the director, Tom Day, said, "Freeze." Let me tell you, man. You did an awesome job. It's just that films like this. There's a lot of contracts for screen time. Yeah. Not just for money, but screen time. And as much as I was fighting for you, I, you know, guys in their contract demand so many like minutes yeah. of solo screen mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And in a film like that, you had a lot of off the bat, 30 minutes of the film belonged to Robert De Niro and Eddie Murphy. Right? Mm -hmm. It's 15 minutes each. That's a that you don't think that's a lot, yeah. that's but that's right. a lot, right. because we're talking about scenes that last thirty seconds, right. mm -hmm. a, a minute and thirty seconds. Right. That's being spread for fifty minutes. That's a whole film, as as it should be. That's their deal. Right. It's their fucking film. Right. But then you start throwing in people like William Shatner. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, motherfuckers! Throw your body at the car. Hey, halt! <laughs> Rene Russo. Russo right. <laughs> Shit. We could give him maybe a uh, funny minority type. The Dean Hardison. Oh, you want to do this the hard way, huh? Hey, get back over here! You're in the rest! Whoa! Most deaf was in there. Right. Police back here, please. Oh, 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 hey, 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 you type it in. Tell me to type it in. Oh, oh, hey, don't tell me to shut up. Hey, you better step on your poor ass right, down. Right, I said I was doing two projects at once. Mm -hmm. The other project I was doing was with these people right here. And that was a short film called Flight of the Bumblebee. Yeah. Now, during that time, I met you guys because you had a, a script called Justice. Which will happen. Hey, this Justice was a dope, dope story. Dope, dope, dope story about redemption, about forgiveness. It was a crazy story, right? I went to... A friend of ours, a producer of House Party 3, Carl Craig, that you guys know in common, mm -hmm. had mentioned me, thank you, Carl, to race, to audition for the role of Craig. Right, the gangster in jail. The gangster in jail. It was, it was a killer scene. It was a killer. Right. It was a dope scene. And, I, and he said, but you might want to check him out for the lead. Because he's got chops. Yeah, I got chops. The reason Carl knew that is because I did a one-man play 
Mm -hmm. A one man play called Pimp. Yep. Positive individual making progress. Written and directed by a brother named Preston Whitmore. Okay? And this was, uh, we did 12 episodes, two, not episodes, but 12 showings. It sold out, you know, 100 seater, sold out standing O's every single night, right here on Sunset Boulevard at a, a, a theater called the Tiffany Theater. Mm -hmm. And it was packed, and I killed that shit. And it was a very well written play and well acted. Yeah, yeah we had write ups mm -hmm. in variety, we had write ups in. And mm -hmm. everything. And mm -hmm. LA, all kind of shit. The shit went sour, because this is Hollywood, and that's how shit goes. But, you know, motherfuckers, nonetheless, <clears throat> I did that. Mm -hmm. I put the work in for that. Right. Nine fucking months I put work in for that. And I was memorizing six different characters that ranged from a 65-year-old man to a 13-year-old kid. Yeah. And that was some good work. And Carla saw that, so he let you, just told you, this dude could do that. And I went in, and I saw you guys, and we talked. And it was like, hold on, you let me read and audition. He was like, yo, this changes everything. We're going to ride with you. And then we was auditioning for the role of Craig for other other people. Mm -hmm. And Kumo D came in for that. Oh, that's oh right. God. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Kumo D. <laughs> mm -hmm. What a... Just to have Kumo D come in and audition was What's, big. Yeah, he was this is a cool. this is a Kumo D to me is the first that's day one of hip hop mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. personally. My homie, you remember Baron, New York? Yep. Good. Oh. We had a student that, that that was at our school from New York named Baron. Oh. Baron Payne. Mm -hmm. Or was it Baron Payne? I remember the last name. I Williamson. New York. Williams, it might have been Baron Williams. I forget. All we knew him as was New York. Right. And he was from Brooklyn. I had never even, I didn't, I didn't know the difference between Brooklyn and fucking, Manhattan. To Brooklyn and Manhattan, between Brooklyn and fucking Rochester. <laughs> I didn't know nothing right. about New York. I was a kid in high school in L.A. Like, right. Right. And this dude came and he had, I was, all, all I knew was this, yo, he, Talk real fucked up, like yo, yo. This nigga was like yo, but he could bag a little bit, but also he was very baggable. Like you could, he was like a fucking, like a piece of clay. You could mm -hmm. just it's so much to bag on this nigga, mm -hmm. and he loved it. He laughed. He's like yo, you crazy, say yo, you man crazy. I'm like yo, this nigga talk like a fucking a baby mobster, <laughs> <laughs> but he was the homie. And this was the cat that uh, he heard me rapping, bagging. I used to bag rap. Mm -hmm. Like, this was before rapping was rapping. Mm -hmm. I was just bagging, and I would put it in rhymes because, you know, it was funnier. Mm -hmm. Like, I see a group of girls. I'll be like, oh, my gosh, the girl in green could frighten Halloween. Mm -hmm. The girl in blue needs to hop at the zoo. The girl in white... Boy, she's a fright. The girl in black, it's beauty she like. And I used to just like oh my goodness. bag like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is like 1981. Right. Okay. He says, yo, man, you a rapper, Freeze. You, he didn't say Freeze. He said, yo, Paul, you a rapper. Mm -hmm. You a rapper. I'm telling you, you a rapper. You could rap. I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, you should rap. He says, you know, like hip hop stuff. I mean, yeah, like rapper's delight. I said, hope. And Curtis, boy, he's like, yeah, nah, I'm talking about real hip hop, though. He said, yo, what you doing at lunch? I was like, nothing. He says, yo, come come with me across the street to his aunt's house. His aunt lived across the street. He was he, That's where he lived, across the street from HS. Yep. So I go over there to this dude's house, and this nigga is a hilarious dude. Like, <laughs> at this same lunch break, he said, yo, I'm going to put an egg in the microwave. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what the fuck? You going to cook an egg in a microwave? He said, yeah, it's quick. I was like, okay, whatever. I some new shit to me. I, I don't right. fuck with I just get a fan and some butter, man. A pan and butter. You cook that shit like that. What the fuck you need a microwave? Mm -hmm. But he's like, nah, nah, microwave's cool. I'm like, all right. So he goes, puts the egg in there. This thing, he puts the egg on some shit like five minutes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Explosion. Right. He goes in, he goes in the living room. He, he just starts pulling out, you know, like albums. And the first album I grabbed was Kumo D and the Treacherous Three. Wow. 
and then the funky funky four plus one more uh uh the the us girls us they all of these people that was in wild style mm-hmm. this is before wild or beat street before that movie i'd seen i hadn't seen that that movie wasn't made yet but i saw these rack and i was like cool mo d He's like, yeah, L.A. Sunshine. And I was like, he's like, so he puts it on. I'm like, wow. He had Just Ice, you know. He had, uh, he had fucking, who else did he have? He had, I don't know if he had Just Us. I take that back. I don't think he had Just Ice. But he had, uh, oh, Busy B. He mm-hmm. had, you know, all these wax, mm-hmm. 12 inches. And, and that was my introduction to hip hop. So Kumo D auditioning for this role in the movie that we were trying to get funding right. for. And he smashed it. Mm-hmm. He, he killed did. it. He Kumo D did. was was going to be that character. Mm-hmm. We was banking on that. Like, okay, let's go get this right. money. Yeah. Went through the whole thing. The the, the movie, uh, we had, um, we shot the trailers. We had uh, Cecily Davis was the, the lead female. She was doing mm-hmm. her thing. Sheila Frazier. Sheila Frazier. Sheila Frazier. From Superfly. Mm-hmm. All of these people for this movie, Justice. Tell me about this um, social worker, is it? I don't know about that one either, though. What you talking about? Man? This is the place, bro. So you guys have a date, right? Yes. <laughs> this is the one. This. I feel good with this. Every time I wear this, I'll be winning. Stop with your nasty little thoughts. I don't even know this man, okay? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It is about time you got to know somebody. Come on, here on the floor. On your first date, you walk through the front door. <laughs> Let's rock some more. Yeah, none of us knows it up. <laughs> Oh, Kayla, but it was more than that, you know? It wasn't just sex, it was, it was intense. Oh, I could really feel him when he touched me. I mean, when I say feel him, <laughs> I mean feel him, girl. Damn. I completely opened myself up to him. And Kayla, I don't even know him. That's the scary part. <laughs> it wasn't even supposed to happen like that. He's out joyriding and is stupid enough to let somebody put a gun in his hand and he pulls the trigger and now he's trying to turn his life around? Don't walk up on me now. You saw the way she looked at me like I was shit. You are a killer, dude. I know what it's like to, to hold the strap and have your homies pump you on some dumb shit. I know what it's like to be taken advantage of by your own self. I'm sorry, I really am, but I don't give a shit about his life. What do you think this whole moving back to the hood thing is about? I mean, who do you think is outside your front door right now? And cannot find the truth cause no one seems to really know. Sheila Frazier was Superfly's girlfriend. Right. She was in this, it was like, this is an icon. And we got scenes. Yeah. We're shooting this shit, this trailer. Okay, we got young Mayan, who's now a producer right. in Hollywood. This is when he was a young actor. Yeah. Yo, this, this movie was some dope shit. It was about to go down. And in the process, the process, motherfuckers, is a motherfucker. Right. Because this, we talking about scraping, scraping, scraping. up money. Scraping up, we, you know, everybody working when they can't get any work and coming Come back, back and trying to, to do this into project. The pot. Yeah, exactly. Okay, boom, that movie, we, we did what we could with that movie. We shot the trailer, trailer's popping, everything's good, but it's just a trailer. It's not the movie. Mm-hmm. People are like, yeah, but you guys are unknown. I mean, well, what a race, what have you done? Some music videos and some sports stuff, and you know, I mean, who's this Linda Hamlin? Then what is she written? And this Freeze Love, he's a comedian. The fuck, this is a drama, so what is this? I don't know, we don't think it's gonna right. work. Boom, whatever, we're trying to do all kind of shit. You, Race got a new camera. Yeah. Called a Canon XL1. <laughs> Canon XL, right? Right, yeah. right. All right. I was in their garage, smoking a joint, 
you had the weights, you had the curl bar back there. Yep. Yep. I'm back there hitting the 50, the, the, the <laughs> down, down, down. And I put it down, and I pick up a joint. <laughs> and Ray's is like, yo, man, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> you lift, you doing some curls, but you smoking weed. Like, right. I'm like, yeah, well, the weed gets me. I go in the zone and just it get to like lift it. Like, right. you know? And then I put the weed down and pick up a new port. Right, right. He's like, the what the thing. fuck? I'm like, yeah, I'm fucked up, man. <laughs> you missed the contract. Right, right. But he's sitting there shooting all of this. But, yeah, you said, yo, let me, hold on, man. I got this new camera. Just shoot some. Just just do what you're doing. Let me shoot it. You shot that shit. And you was looking at, we went in, put it on your on your uh, computer. Yep. You was like, yo, come look at this. That shit looked like, <laughs> it looked like a film. Like, like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? Yes. You shot that with that camera? Sunlight was coming through the window in that garage. Yeah, it was that shit. I remember I got home from work. He's like, come look at this. Come look at this. Yo, Linda said, I'm going to write. That's so good. If I write something about that, will you do it? I'm like, hell yeah. Fuck yeah, let's do it. Boom. We started doing it. That's when I get, you know, that's when I went to Chicago. That whole thing. I came back from Chicago to do the, you know, didn't. I got that fucking um, the Showtime, right? And then you guys was like, "Yo, guess what, man? We got some. We got a. We got a script for that little thing I shot." <laughs> like really? He's like, "Yeah." So we're gonna be shooting, and I'm like, "Yo, whatever." I will get done from the set of working with Rob De Niro, Eddie Murphy, and then we are drive to the Valley, and we would be. In the Laffer's Apprentice apartment. <laughs> Laffer's, Laffer's Journeyman. Apprentice. Laffer's, Laffer's, Laffer's Journeyman. Journeyman. Laffer's Journeyman. Dominique Brown's apartment. Who was out of town? Didn't know none of this. He was out of town. He, he got a gig to go shoot out of town film. and shoot another, another film. But uh, he left the keys. Like, hey, take care of my apartment. Oh, nigga, hell yeah, we'll exactly. take care of your apartment, nigga. Right, right. Exactly. Shoot a movie in your apartment, Jack. Somebody move my book. Uh, yeah, set dressing. <laughs> That's who moved your book. Yeah. Yo, yes. we, we were shooting that. Man, it was crazy because the f- the food in the movie that we were eating was really food like <laughs> motherfucker. We're, like, we're, we're, we were eating. Like, yeah, why don't we shoot this scene? We're waiting on the food, the props, and we're hungry in the motherfucker. When's lunch? When the food gets here. <laughs> Yeah. One of the same. One of the same. Right. Exactly. Doing that. What a- yeah, mini D V tapes. Like yes, the little D V tapes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That shit was done though. That right. for everybody's schedule was just like mm-hmm. whenever they would have time, you know. Um shit, man. We was we shot that film like it. Sometimes those scenes were fucking weeks apart. Right. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like, yeah. yo, we got to shoot this. We got, like, everybody's going to be ready. We could shoot it at 2 a.m. Literally. That Literally. That was exactly what we're doing. If, but we got to get it because we need, we need this. this is, we, could, we could be done with all of this if we get this. And, all right, cool. Boom, we did it. Did this movie. Movie's called Fly to the Bumblebee. And we sent it out. We just sent it. You Well, no, at that point, we knew we wanted, we had, found out about the Showtime Black Filmmaker Showcase. Oh. And we, we knew we wanted to enter in that, so we made our deadline. Um, you know, we set our deadline to get the entry done and submit it. And we got it shot, got it cut, and we did all the paperwork. I did all the paperwork, and we sent it in. And at that time, we were sending in a, um, what did we have to send in? A, a, it wasn't a VHS, it was a... What format did we have to send it on? DVD. Okay, so we sent it on in on DVD, <laughs> and then we just had to wait because there was no, there was no email or I there mean was there was no. email, but it was like you were gonna get no. And we waited, and I think we waited for like two weeks, but we all felt really strong about. So just in a nutshell, basically the film is about a guy who's a former thug who's trying to get his life together, trying to and um, get his GED and move forward out of that life. And he makes one last run because he's broke and then ends up, instead of the payment, he's given a girl. 
who has been basically mistreated all her life. So these two misfits end up together and they find each other's greatness, basically. Hey, how you doing? You've been sleeping a long time. I guess the medicine is what made you so tired. Figured you might be hungry, so I'm making you my specialty spaghetti. Yeah. My mom says that good spaghetti is in the sauce. So, that's what I'm doing, I'm making you my specialty. <laughs> so, um, I was kind of thinking and wondering maybe, you know, if, um, you know, if, if, um, we could make this kind of like a, a date, you know? <laughs> oh, no, no, don't worry, don't worry, look. I got this here for you. It's for you, go on and take it. I know you're always looking in those magazines and looking at all those pretty girls and, you know, you're just as pretty as them. You know, they got all kind of stuff, so I figured if I got you that stuff, you'd get to see how pretty you are. The lady at the store said the colors are in this season. She made the last. So. The character's a dumb one. Well, it's yeah, but he's not. He's, he's he's he seems dumb, but he's not. And she seems oh, dumb, in the, dumb in the eyes of the world because she doesn't speak. She only really says one thing. But where their connection is in the title, "Flight of the Bumblebee" um, by Rimsky uh, Korsakov, uh, basically a bumblebee, the design of a bumblebee, it shouldn't be able to fly based on its aerodynamic design. But the bumblebee doesn't know it, and that was the whole point of the movie: is that you're great in many ways and, and we often don't know it and they right. both were very great and that's how they and he does his orchestrating flight yeah, of the this bumblebee character, yeah. this character has taken the ged and failed like five <laughs> times right it's kind of sad yeah, <laughs> but this, he gets but, off on his classical but music this dude yeah. listens to rimsky korsakoff because in his mind, that's the kind of shit that smart people listen to. Right. So if he listens to what smart people listen to, it is bringing and attracting intelligence. Right. right. And he's got all kind of little affirmations written. Now this is a thug. This dude is a murderer. Right. This dude is torturous. This dude yeah. will fucking put a fucking uh, blowtorch to your blowtorch ass. to your <laughs> ass. Journey with me into the mind of a maniac. Doomed to be a killer since I came out the nutsack. A man of murder. It was dope as fuck. Right. Right. Then we win another film festival. Win another, yo. We won this film festival though, man. <laughs> out the yeah, blue. Yeah, out of the blue, right? Because you a and a, and the biggest time. criticism of, uh, in the beginning, the way the movie starts, it seems like it might be some kind of just like dark. ghetto, dark, twisted thug thing. But it's if for you, we knew people who didn't watch the whole movie when we got feedback, yeah. so because you could immediately know that okay, you you're telling me these things, you didn't get to the end, which because you prejudged and stopped, and basically, it's you know the heart of the story is where the, how they grow together. Now, mind you, this is at a time in Hollywood. Um, this is before <laughs> Empire. Mm -hmm. way. This is bef way before. This is before. What else is? Uh, what year was this? Let's put the year. On. Uh, this flight was in. Was it nine eight ninety? Two thousand ninety nine. And it's like ninety nine, I think. But there was um, this was this was kind of like before. I don't know what it was. It was a weird time because this um, was, it was two thousand one. 2001. This is before Tyler Perry. This is before <laughs> the, the yeah. Hollywood was still trying to actually play like black movies weren't important. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. or black movies didn't yeah. make a lot of money. Or there was a special formula, you know, that only special people could do these type of movies. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't. Right. It hadn't really tapped into the black independent mm-hmm. filmmaker right. at all. This is when we had film festivals in L.A. like Doughboy's Classics. Right. Oh yes, God. that's right. We that's right. The Pan-African yeah. Film yeah. Festival. Right. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Doughboy, R.I.P. Shout out to Matt McDaniels, another right. filmmaker that was out there with the Rhythm Rock Live. So Matt was a cameraman filming independent shit when nobody else was. Right. And Showtime had their Black Filmmaker Showcase. And Showtime had this Black Filmmaker Showcase. And Shout out to Showtime for that. Took us in memory. It was a few weeks, but when we, um, and it was like, it was a phone call. And I remember answering the phone and, you know, they're like, well, you know, so and so and such and such from Showtime. Congratulations. Your film has won the grand prize for the 2002 Showcase. And I was like at home by myself at the time. And I was like, oh, my God. And well, I remember, gosh. I think Race had gone to the store and we had the Monte Carlo. So I remember I went outside and hopped up on the back of the Monte Carlo and just sat back like this and waited for everybody to come back home. <laughs> I just had crossed my feet and waited. And we about freaked out when um, it was just really cool. Uh, and it's still, a, I think it's a very classic story. It is. About it people really- finding their greatness. It's a dope, um, dope film, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll put we'll a, um, yeah, a link yeah. up. But, yeah, Flight of the Bumblebee, and it was 2001. But, okay, for us in the show, because we have uh, just some cool things to talk about. So we did the we did this a year ago. We went from zero donut to 13.7 thousand subscribers. And thank you. we've had over 5 thank million you. hours viewed of the show. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But you kind of jumped the gun because I was going to like really set you up lovely to say all of that. But well, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. And she's yet to learn. Wow. See? Ready. A whole wow. year. That, I mean, that just that just yeah. documents <laughs> precisely what we've been going through. Last week it was yeah, I think somebody in the comments said, it is called yeah. Freeze Talks. I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah. And you know, see, I was going to get to, we had, a, we had more to get to. Right, I We got a whole other thing. Like, from that, we went to the fucking Black Hollywood Film Festival yeah. and won that shit. Smashed yes. on the ass. Smashed on the ass. Matter of fact, People here's where we got. We had to get gangster with them. They were hating here's, here's where it really got fuckery. <laughs> God, I don't remember all this. You don't remember all of this. Your shit went in this shit. <laughs> right. But this is kind of like where we fucked up. Let this be a lesson. I mean, the fuckery. I don't remember the fuckery. You I'm don't like, remember the fuckery? Not a, right. I Maybe I will. Go on. It, it, you know, there's a lot of, let me tell you, man, there's a lot of actors, a lot of pretty guys, yeah. uh-huh. pretty handsome actor guys. But it's, it's, quite frankly, they didn't like a comedian yeah. stepping oh. up into that realm. They yep. did not. I'm like, motherfucker, well, you didn't have a problem. Tom Hanks was a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Whoopi Goldberg was a comedian. Uh, let's see, let's see, the list goes on. There's a lot of comedians. Robin Williams, mm-hmm. Robin Williams is a comedian. Right. Motherfucker, I'm sorry, acting for a comedian? <laughs> That's part of the gig. I don't know what y'all thought. <laughs> sorry, mercy, get the fuck out of here. I'll do dramatic if I want to do I, dramatic. Of course you will. Right, so that's where I was coming from. Mm-hmm. And we were smashing it. You smashing that it. shit. And it was to the point, these motherfuckers like, God damn, man, this is brilliant. This is fucking bread. Because How much did you spend? How much? What was the budget? <laughs> we were so proud to say, man, we did all this for 600 bucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid us. <laughs> That's what fucked us up. <laughs> Stupid uh, us. Like you live and you learn. It's like, uh, we did this for six. I mean, it is Because crazy. we yeah. was like, if we could do this we was with like, this. If we could do this with this. That's our logic. Imagine if right. you give us some meals, motherfucker. Right. That should be anyone's logic. Right. That should be but, anyone's logic. But, but that's Hollywood's not so Hollywood. so fucked up. It's a, Hollywood they're so full of like, shit. It's so Hollywood full of shit. Hollywood is like, well, you will not be talking to anyone that we're talking right. to. Right, right. Yep. Because if you tell the people we're talking to, you see, basically, did you see that bullshit we put up? Right. Yeah, we got some mills to do exactly. that bullshit. We did. And you're exactly. not coming in here 
doing this brilliant shit for 600 bucks Fuck. because that's basically shooting us in the goddamn yeah. knee. Exactly. Get the fuck out of here, you fucking morons. Pretty much. Yeah. That's what we had to learn. That's what we had to learn. Yeah, we learned, learned that learn. shit, oh, though. Oh, we learned because we did everything according to well, the book. So now it costs bread. I have to say, as, a, as an actor, I mean, so, like, I, your, your talent is just boundless because you funny as fuck, but then the the sensitivity that you brought that I've seen you bring to roles, either Justice or um, yeah, Mod and Fly, and I mean, right. it's it's no you. I mean, you. I just have to really say, I'm. You know, you're so amazingly talented. You really well, are, and then it's, it's not. You. It's no secret. Thank you. But um, it's so cool to be able to know that. You can write something, you can hear it in your head, you can think of what, what you want to be emoted from it, and then to see someone do it and then put their own flavor and their own style, and it's authentic, and it's rich, and it touches you, that I, I, that's, that's acting. That's some hella acting, and you are a very, very good actor. Very good actor. Yeah. Yes. We'll thank you. On, on, on yeah. No, listen, man, thank you. I that's mean, true, that's true. I thank you, and I thank you because... The only reason that you know that is because you gave me the opportunity to show that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right. It's like you guys at that time when we were doing these films, it was at a time where it was like, yo, man, I'm kind of burnt out on this whole Hollywood. You know, Hollywood is a, is a game. It's a rough game. It's a very Auditioning, rough game. Auditioning. You, you got to, your it's skin has to be thick as fuck. Yeah. You gotta, you're gonna take no a lot. You're gonna be on cloud nine one minute, the next minute, you, you'll be nine feet under the ground. Yeah. And at the same time, you're nine feet under the ground, the next minute, you're on cloud nine. Yeah. This motherfucker's unpredictable. It's like no other business in the fucking world. Right. I promise you that. It is like, right. no, there is no, you do A, B, C, and you get D. No, 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 not at all. There's just none of that. No. You do A, B, C, motherfucker. You you'll get K, L, R, <laughs> which you gotta take to W, T. Right. Yo, whatever. Right. It's, it is what it is. This this shit is is unbelievable business, man. I mean, to the point, you'll be talking to a motherfucker about some serious shit, right. and they will have all the indications that they are really about this some serious shit. Right. Yep. They will have the right everything and only to find out that this motherfucker is completely full of shit. Yes. They are not with the, it's like <laughs> Yeah, I know what you, you just thought got of. Me, you got me, yeah. bitch. That's real out here. It's motherfucker the game is uh the smoke and mirrors is not what you see on film. Smoke is mirrors is behind the film. Mm -hmm. And this motherfucker, if you're, if it's um, it's a it's a life, it's a life, man. That's all I it's can say. It's a life. It's a life. And a portion of that life, I lived. I have lived with you. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So this show, the whole podcast mm -hmm. idea, was something that was like mm, podcast. <laughs> Motherfucker, we make films. <laughs> we make damn good films. We make TV series. Right. Yeah. Right. We're on TV series with you. Mm -hmm. We do. You, we in the game. We created. We created. Created yeah. shows. College Hill. Yeah. College Hill. Yo, we created shows that we went and pitched. They turned down, and ended up being some of your favorite shows on MTV. Mm -hmm. Under a whole different name. Yeah. But I know who created that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know this. This is a, a hell of a fucking uh, existence to live in. Yes. And I'm not the only person. I, I have friends. Right. Other writers. Yeah. You know, cats, man, cats like my nigga Chris Cobb. What up, yeah. Chris Cobb? Yes, Chris. What up, Dan Chris? and Green. What up, Dan and Green? These dudes are, are writers, black writers. That got real stories of our real lives that got to scratch and crawl yep. through the system of muck, of people, of, you know, motherfuckers 
it's it's a different kind of life, and it's 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 a rough life. It's a rough life. When you know you're good, right? It's even it's even more difficult. It's an ebb and a flow, but and thank um, God right? Yeah, yeah, yeah because sure. that's this right. this podcast was a thing that you know. I, yeah, I wanted to do. I wanted to do a podcast. I was trying to do a podcast with my homie Brian Holtzman. Uh, it's going to be called Grits and Gefilde Fish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like a brother and a Jewish dude. And we and and it didn't. You know, it it wasn't that it was bad. It just it it didn't. It wasn't. You didn't connect. Didn't connect. I mean, me and Brian Holtzman. Brian Holtzman is a brilliant comedian, man. Mm-hmm. That's my dude. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker, this motherfucker, here's some Brian Holtzman jokes. A homeless man, a homeless man asked me for a ride. He says, we've developed quite a friendship because uh, every time I got to use the diamond lane, I find him and he works out great because whenever I'm going there, wherever I'm going, I just kick him out. You're home. You're home. <laughs> You remember Octomom? Yeah. Okay. This dude, this Brian Holtzman joke, not Freeze Love jokes. Brian Holtzman joke, and it's not to the T. Okay. But it's, these are the, you, this is a comedian that, mm-hmm. this motherfucker says, Octomom. Well, right, when are they going to lock this fucking chick up? She's, she's created a nuisance for society. You understand? Eight fucking kids, eight fucking infants, two tits. <laughs> what the fuck is this? What kind of a setup is this? There's always going to be somebody hungry in this fucking <laughs> eight fucking kids. Two tits. Do you understand? These kids are going to grow up to be, to be, to be fucking, they're going to grow up to be fucking whores. They're going to grow up, they're always going to feel deprived. They're going to grow up to be fucking stick up kids. They're going to grow up to be murderers. They're going to go, they're going to grow up to be cops. <laughs> That's a Brian Holzman joke. He's funny as fuck, but when it came time for the fucking uh, podcast, it didn't work. So what do you think made the difference here? And wait, by the way, 13.7 thousand subscribers, over 5 million hours viewed, which that to me That's crazy. speaks volumes. Over 5 million hours viewed. Yes. Thank you. They're wa- Thank that, you. Man. And they're watching the majority of the hours. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not. Generally, yes. um, I think the, the stats are you people watch maybe about the first 40 seconds of something on YouTube before they decide if they're going to click or not. So for us, people stay, you know, for pretty much the entire show, which is, which is awesome. Yeah, because we, we shout out to the weed heads. They ain't going nowhere. (laughs) 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 They may want to go. They'd be like, man, fuck it. It's like, right. Right. They blazing a bowl. (laughs) What love, baby? (laughs) Man, thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm serious. Thank you so much. That people have said about you, so we're just gonna give you a props. Which is some of my favorite quotes. Take the props. Take the props. The just props. let us give you the props. Okay. Freeze is the Mark Twain of comedy. Yay, I agree with that. Um, this wow. show is what the internet has been missing. Uh, asthma sufferers don't watch without your inhaler. Um, I binge watch Freeze talks like Netflix shows. Um, driving you hear that Netflix? <laughs> yes, yeah, hello. That bitch? Um, I be, uh, driving uh, driving Uber. I have everyone laughing with Freeze talks, and Freeze might be the best storyteller on the web. Wow. What I, I want to say real quick, I know we're about to wrap up real quick. It was so Linda, you just read something about Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah. Like someone saying that we need structure to the show. Right. Someone so, did. Let me just make one point. Go ahead. Freeze, you carry an hour and 15, 20 minutes just by being you. This is shit you used to do at the house with yep. us. And for us, every night was a show. We knew once we got raised to bed, Dominique was coming over with some, some goodies. We had some weed. And we knew free, Freeze is either watching a documentary. Yo, I mean. You sit rubbing your goatee. Like it. Like, it's about yep. to be a show. And, and so for anyone to be able to do that, it's better than stand up. Yeah. Bullshit, nigga. Well, uh, stand up is live, though. <laughs> oh, true that, true that, true, true that. 
Right. I love y'all, man. It, yes. I love y'all. It is like, we don't, but, we don't edit, it, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, I know, hearing I know you guys saying. laugh gets kind of boring. No. no, no, no. I'm not, but I'm you not, don't hear I'm, us laughing when we're putting the show together. That's true. I don't hear nothing, man. Right. Listen, man, this is a lot of a lot to take because it, it's it's so deep. You, you motherfuckers don't understand, man. We were really, really trying to get some shit done. Right. To the point that we basically had to like spread the fuck out and go like, yo, it was frustrating. I, I went to New York. Mm-hmm. We had we had shot. We had, what was it? We was in New York. I was in New York really like out of like, fuck Hollywood. Right. Fuck, yeah. I, I let my agent go. I let my management Everybody, go. Yeah. Like, I'm not even going to bullshit with you, man. I don't want to audition for shit. I don't want to do shit, man. Mm-hmm. I want to be a stand-up, com- goddamn stand-up comedian. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to New York and I don't want to hear shit. I, I'm not interested in that. I want to do stand-up. And I went out there, and I did. I went, yo, man, Freddie Ricks, salute. Cool Baba Ice, salute. Jay right. from Jersey, salute. Cool Herm, salute. Uh, fucking uh, Sleepy Floyd, salute. A.G. White, salute. My mm-hmm. fucking J.P. Justice, salute. Man, Mike Yard, salute. You know, these was guys that are comedians. Mm-hmm. Eat, sleep, shit, stand up. Right. It's their life. Right. They showed me an existence without Hollywood, without even giving a fuck about acting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I went out there. The last thing we did, that's what we forgot, that I had to talk about because it was important. It was really important. We did this show called Fatter Days. Oh, my God. I oh my I could really forget this. Fatter Days, yeah. Now, this was, you know... My man Kyle, Kyle Bowser was a producer. Mm-hmm. It was a thing where he was, where you guys were like, look, man, these guys, they got some money, but they're not willing to share on the credit. But they got some money and they need some sketches. Mm-hmm. Do you, I think you could do this. You said that. You said freeze them time. I think you could write these guys. I was like, shh. How much are they paying? And I don't remember what it was, but I was like, no credit. It's like, they're not giving it up. They're not, they're not trying. It's bread. Right. right. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. We went to work. Because I need bread. And we went to work. Went to work. In three days. hmm In three days, we wrote 40 sketches. Come on now. Yep. 40. 40. 40 like sketches. 43. 40 great like sketches. Like 43, yeah, like bomb sketches. <laughs> right, right. It turned it, we turned it into a series called Fatter Days. Mm-hmm. Right? Boom. Okay, now I'm in New York. <laughs> All right? I hit this show. My man, Stefan Dweck. My man, um, Warrington Hudlin. This comedian named Fig. Comedian named Freddie Ricks. Comedian named... Uh, 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 fucking uh, Ratso, mm-hmm. a comedian named Mark Overton. Um, who the fuck else? Did I say Freddie Ricks? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All of these dudes, they're writing for this cartoon called The Big Head People. Mm-hmm. I was in New York. I'd been in New York for about maybe about 11 months, not even a full year yet. And I bump into this uh, Ray Murphy, right? Ray Murphy says, yo, you do all them damn voices. <laughs> he said, you should come up, and you know who Stefan Dweck is. I'm like, Stefan Dweck? I know Stefan Dweck because I did Snaps. Mm-hmm. I did Snaps. Snaps was a series that they did uh, CDs of bagging and Snaps. They did a book. I was in that. Stefan Dweck was one of the writers and producers of that. I said, yeah, I know him. He says, yo, man, you should come up and audition. You, you know what? Come at about 3 o'clock. Mm-hmm. He called Steph on the phone. He said, yeah, come up to to someplace in the, in the in the village in New York at about 3 o'clock. Or about 3 o'clock. I was like, cool. I'm in Brooklyn with my homie Henny Lokes. Now, up until this point, I had been experiencing New York 
Mm. <laughs> really from the eyes of a criminal. <laughs> Not that I was Truth a criminal. It was, it was like, yo, I, I had to... I had to get, I had to absorb this new area, this new region of the world. New York was not some shit, you know, especially doing stand up, motherfucker, all the slang, all the everything is different. Right. And if, you know, you know, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what the fuck I was up against. I just, and I was kind of pushing it off, and I just wanted to know more about my surroundings before I really got into right. stand up. And that, of course, led me to hang out with a lot of guys that just so happen to be criminals. <laughs> <laughs> kind of happens like that. Kind of happens like that. And it was, thank goodness, because I learned very quickly, like, first off, I'm not going to be creating no crime or doing no crime in New York. No. Yeah. No. no, I'm not doing that. Because if I get arrested in New York, yes. all of a sudden... I become a Latino. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck what, a, what I'm saying. Right. Hey, hey, I'm not Latino. Why? No, they're not, they're not, they're not gonna play that. Made a population. <laughs> I know, you say you're not Latino. You're Latino now. Right. You're Latino now. And I'm like, that's true. I would be around. Even brothers would be like, yo, son, I know you black because I know who you are. You're a hell of a comedian and all of that. But in here, you got to go over there with them, son, because you right. fucking up everything over here. The niggas is confused now. So I was like, I'm not going to be doing no crime out here. But mm -hmm. <laughs> I was still hitting it. I was in Brooklyn. Right. I was doing Brooklyn shit mm -hmm. with Brooklyn people throughout Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And I was smoking a blunt. And my boy Henny Lowe said, yo, Froze, didn't you say you had to go to the city today at like 3 o'clock? I'm like, yeah, it's about fucking 1 o'clock. I'm like, yeah, that's at 3 o'clock. He's like, yeah, but you know, it's the city, man. I had that blunt. I was like, take this blunt. I'm out. I left. He's like, yo, you ain't playing. He's like, no, I'm not. I left right there, went and got on the train, walked in, did all the trains, from the C train on Fulton, Fulton and Washington, all the way to the village. I get off and, you know, like by fucking NYU, whatever, I'm walking, I'm mashing, I'm mashing through this, I'm mobbing, mm -hmm. trying to get there, because time is, you know, waiting on trains and this shit. I'm like, God damn. Yeah. At three o'clock, I hit the building. As I'm hitting the building, these motherfuckers, Stefan Dweck, Ray Murphy, they're leaving the building. Mm hmm. I'm like, hey. They're like, hey, what's up? I'm like, yo, you said 3 o'clock. It is 3 o'clock on a dot. <laughs> we were leaving, but we did say, well, you know what? Come upstairs. Wow. Say, so you do voices. I said, yeah. said, have you ever written sketches? <laughs> yeah. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Just so happens. I'm like, yeah. I've, I've written a lot that of sketches. sketches. Right. <laughs> and they're like, really? You know what? Not only do we need you as, for voices, but we'd also like you to be a writer on this cartoon. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I said confidently, like, yeah, I can do that. I know I can do that. Mm -hmm. And I did. Yeah. And for the next couple of years, I wrote on this cartoon. It was in, on Spike TV that was... <laughs> That was set to air the first episode, time slotted on Spike TV right after the Dave Chappelle show. The big head people. We're gonna show a clip of that too. Because we wrote those cartoons and the comedians I mentioned, we did the voices on that. This shit tested through the roof. Mm -hmm. Everything was going good and some shit that was above our heads happened. Had nothing to do, right. yo, man. This is this is in New York, but it's still Hollywood business. It's still mm -hmm. entertainment business. What? They pulled the fucking plug on that show, but I didn't care because I was I got checks. I was right. hired as a freelance writer from MTV and Spike TV, and, it, and, and you, I thank you for that, Linda. Me? Yeah, because on those sketches, you 
you you taught me. You were like, yo, well, you, okay, your stories, you, it's just like your jokes. You, everything's in threes. We keep this tight. We got to just boom, boom, punch. Oh, wow. Boom, okay. boom, boom, punch. Boom, boom, punch. <laughs> you, you know, just s- yeah. simple rhythms of learning how to write. Right. It was fun. And it was, it was confidence. Fun. It was confidence. Yeah. Half the shit you can't do if you don't, you can't do. But you mm-hmm. just said with confidence, you said, yes, I can. Yes, I, I can. can. Like, you it. couldn't I tell me I couldn't, motherfucker. Right. I already right. know what I did. Right. I saw the sketches I did mm-hmm. get shot and hit to an audience that won. Right. What are you talking about? Yeah. Friday was hot and with Kid from Kid and Play. Right. And a whole fun. bunch of people. Those other sketches were great. Yeah. The first episode, dude. Those are good sketches. And JB Smooth. JB Smooth. Leslie. Um, Leslie. Um, yeah. Who else was like? that? Leslie Jones. Uh, Lonnie Love. Lonnie Love. Um, D Ray. D Ray. D Ray. Um, oh my goodness. And finesse, and um, okay. I was tripping because the first episode, all those comedians are major. Major. Now, how did y'all know about those comedians? Oh, da, da, da. I don't know. We because said freeze, um, you know, not days, all you were casting. I was telling you, yo, you and gotta get you this were, person. You give me this phone. And I was telling, this, right? Yep, yep. We, we were, put money in their pocket too, right? Yes, yeah. we did. Yes, we yo, did. Yo, man. Everybody you just named on call the real. Them, call them folks. And they when, were, when, when y'all didn't have nothing, nothing, you didn't even have film. They didn't. They didn't. But that was like a freeze camp. Freeze was looking out. Yep. I was really, I've always looked out. Yep. I've always, any time I can ever get comedians into some shit where it's acting. Yes. Because I know, you know, hey, if we got control, we can hire who we want. Yep. Mm-hmm. Not because they're our friends. Fuck all of that. That's but because crazy. a lot of times motherfuckers who are dope don't have the agent. That's right. yeah. They don't have the management. They mm-hmm. don't got shit. But they got skills. They right. got talent. Right. They need a shot. Tommy Chun. Tommy Chun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, homie. Come on. Really? And, then, and that's why this time is so awesome with being able to do this on YouTube. You know, I mean, like people yes. now have have an avenue right there at their fingertips and they can they can make which it. is why mm-hmm. back to this we also what brought us back was i was ready to do a special and i wanted it to be special it was like I don't, i'm not going for just a fucking big show film it let's go i'm not no 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 i want a special like the specials were when i was getting into comedy Right. The shit that made me want to be a comedian. I mm-hmm. wanted that. Mm-hmm. And I knew that the only person that I really trusted with that vision was race. Didn't. I was, you know, I was, I tried it with a few other people. Mm-hmm. And it was cool. We were, we came up with some ideas, but it didn't work out. It wasn't flowing. It wasn't. It wasn't matching up. Shit wasn't, it wasn't going. Right. Me and Race talked, and the thing was, me and him talked about a special. (laughs) On our first conversation, way back when you was talking about justice, Mm -hmm. we were talking about shooting a special. Okay? Now was the time. This new day, hey, we can do this. We got some some financiers. They put up some bread. We did this. We shot the special that is extraordinary, uh, dynamic. These are this is what I'm getting back. Okay. Yo, I did my thing with this brother. We did our thing, and this brother Dominique. This was yeah. This was a a thing. Now, the whole idea was like, look, man, you got to do a podcast. And I was like, yeah, I know. I want to do a podcast. I don't know. You know, I was trying. I'd been trying. But, you know, what the fuck is a podcast? He's like, check this out. What do you think about doing something like with, with Linda? This is his wife. I'm like, yeah, I know Linda, of course. I know Linda well, his family. I'm down with that because it's not going to be a lot of, you know, 
number one, it's not going to be no motherfucking malice ever. Mm-hmm. That's never an issue. Right. Or, or no ill feeling. Mm-hmm. Come on. That's not an issue. Which always will allow us to bring out what the fuck, you know, whatever the fuck it is that it is. So, with the structure, mm-hmm. motherfucker, check this out. <laughs> the structure is so intense, you couldn't see it. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Boom. Oh. Boom. To That's- the novice... There is no structure. Right. As someone to said, the, the show needs structure. I'm like, yeah, structure, it's a flow, baby. It's a it flow. It has structure. It, structure like some real fucking aerodynamic shit. <laughs> <laughs> like that bumblebee. Like that motherfucking <laughs> bumblebee. <laughs> what have been some right. of your favorite memories? Like, just uh, just off the top, top. I'm going to get my surprise. Favorite memories from what? From, like, just like some of the episodes. These episodes? Yeah. Of the 500 million. Of the 500 million hours, I think one of my favorite was the was uh when I telling the story of getting my ass whooped. I took my finger. Oh no! Oh no! And I put my finger in his ear. <laughs> in his ear. In his ear. I said, "Nigga, I'll fuck this a dicky shit, nigga." I felt the back of my motherfucking. <laughs> It was this fool in the checkers. <laughs> Old taxi cab had gotten up, <laughs> grabbed my ass, smashed me over. The snatch you over he the rail? Snatched me over the rail. I was already half dead <laughs> over. <laughs> Man, them niggas snatched me over. They beat the shit out of me. All I heard was country boy. Hit him again! Hit him! Beat him up! Hit him again! Beat him up! Look out, big boy! Look out! Let me get him! Let me get him, big boy! <laughs> That was hilarious, and it was very, it was, it was uh, freeing. You know what I'm saying? It's good to get that off my chest. Like, yeah, motherfucker, I have my ass whooped. There are some people on this planet that can point at me and say, I whooped that nigga's ass. <laughs> they, yeah. They, they, I'm not above getting my ass whooped, and I think, and I promise you, not I think, I'm certain it has made me a better person. <laughs> Jen and Mad Dog 2020 <laughs> opposite. Opposite. First of all. First of all. If you drink, put in moderation. Have a sip, so sweet. Maybe. I don't know. Don't drink at all. I don't drink at all. So you could say this is one good. of the things that made me see, you know, this shit don't right. really work with me. Right. It's just, it's not your thing. Yeah, I'm medicated. I'll, I'll <laughs> go to doctors and get prescriptions <laughs> to get my medicine. It right. works with me. Right. Okay, so I, I didn't make a cake, but what I did was make some banana nut, chocolate chip, and walnut bread. Ooh. And it's really good. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. How you feel about one year? I feel great. I never thought it would happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. We started over here. Right. We over here. Right, that's real. Man, and, look okay. at that. Okay, it's like, oh. Walnut and, look, I'm going to take a bowl hit for that. Right. Raise my bowl for right. breakfast. Hey, Dominique. Hey. What's up, man? Hey. You, you gonna try to outdo her? Look, look, look. I suggest you should try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You wanna be alone? You know what? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll try a couple more pieces to see if it's alone. I was like, oh my God, we don't have a cake. Yeah. So I was like, well, I have banana bread. Man. You like it? Wow, Linda. How's that? Wow. Wow. I need me a cup with a bowl. I know, we need some yeah, coffee. Man. That's the rest of the evening right there. This or that? <laughs> is, that is it That's little, crazy. Is it chewy though? No, it's I banging. Did I did it with butter oil. instead of vegetable oil. Yeah, man. That's what you should do. Oh, it's for her. He's back. Yeah. Yeah, printed Woo. flappers in the house. Oh, the printed flappers. I was here day one, too. <laughs> yeah, he was here. He was, he was here day one. The young giggler. The young giggler. Young giggler. The giggler. 
<laughs> the insta giggler. He's the insta giggler. And the thing to me that is, it's like I just pick things that I think will be interesting for you to talk about. And then you will go off on some, I mean, like, how we, when we, I told you about Mount Everest, that shit became so hilariously classic. Well, you know, I went to Everest this summer. Yeah. You stupid motherfucker. Right. Right. Bitch, you haven't been to motherfucking Whittier. How the fuck are you going to go to Everest? <laughs> The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> but then the other thing that they were saying that was really standing out was just the lack of humanity from, of from human to human. Because yeah. that's people a need water or fire. people need not, help in any way. It's like whatever. They just want to be at Everest. Yeah. You can be right. up in that mo. <laughs> <laughs> Stepping over dead mo. <laughs> As you're running out of oxygen right. and nobody wants to get out of your way to help you get and back. I hope I hope those serpents go through the pockets of those motherfuckers <laughs> they do. every they night. You that, goddamn right. They do. They said serpents. theft, of, theft yeah. at that base yeah. camp is huge too. So oh yeah, the serpents is clocking. Oh yeah, yeah. you want to go they gotta all take the way. everything off to go to Oh do yeah, it. we walk you all halfway. <laughs> get you on your own. <laughs> okay, we know. We know fucking with you. Tip a top. It's a white man. <laughs> yeah, you. Go tip a top. <laughs> you. Go all the way. Keep it climbing. Keep it climbing. You can do it. You can do it, Piggy. Easy. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good job. Good job, Josh. Listen, I, I'm going to go back to base camp. Yeah, I come see you in about a week. I come get your money. <laughs> yeah, oh, I leave soon for you. Oh, my God. Niggas is up there. Serpents is clocking. Yeah, oh my God. absolutely. Oh, you, new hiker. All right. <laughs> Big yes. adventure, yeah, bucket yes. risk. This is your bucket risk. <laughs> oh yeah, this is gonna be a great hike. <laughs> Do you have a tennis shoe? You, you, you have on tennis shoe? <laughs> oh, tennis shoe not gonna work. <laughs> However, I have a timberine. All size, you have to buy timberine. Yeah, I get for you. <laughs> I bought on Canal Street for oh. you. <laughs> you need backpack. <laughs> no good. This backpack no good. But they have to take them off anyway. Yeah, you have to take off. You need new backpack <laughs> on the top of the hill. Up there. Find out more. <laughs> buy now, cheap for you. You're going to have to buy water and air. I'm going to have to buy air. Yeah, they have to buy air. All the way up there, you're going to need more air. You have to go talk to my cousin. <laughs> Tommy. Go ask for Tommy. He's going to give you a discount if you got a ticket from me. <sighs> you know, got a ticket. It's going to cost a lot of money. You need grow stick too. <laughs> when you yeah, grow stick, when you snap it, eat it grow. Very fly. <laughs> Yeah. That way, St. Bernard can find you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a Kojo. Kojo gonna find you. If you don't have a girl stick, he not can find. <laughs> you gonna flee. You flee to them. You flee. Oh, it's very cool. Very cool. You need five, seven more top ramen. <laughs> Seven more. Hot chocolate. <laughs> cocoa. You like a cocoa? Hot chocolate. Yeah, we have that. Oh, ten dollar. Ten dollar. A Swiss Miss. Oh shit. A Swiss Miss. A ten dollar. Yeah, yeah. It's the best hot chocolate. Make you fairly oh, warm. Oh my god. Oh my god. Could you imagine though, if you waited hours in line, you almost at the top of that thousand feet, and you realize you're running out of oxygen? <laughs> Are you waving that ticket? Tommy! <laughs> Tommy! <laughs> Tommy! There's some guy up here. There's supposed to hike in my hair. His name's Tommy. Tommy! Oh, that's no, no Leo Tommy. Stupid. Yeah, stupid. Oh, uh, he from Wisconsin. <laughs> he tell me he can handle cold. <laughs> he calling for Tommy. 
No, I hear him. I put a lady or something. I go to his pocket later. Laughing at his ass. He said, Tommy, <laughs> I got the ticket. <laughs> he looks for Tommy. I hear him. Shh, shh, listen. Listen, listen. Tommy. See? You hear him calling. <laughs> oh, it's not Tommy. You Tommy. He said, Tommy. Fuck him. I met him in parking lot. Right. He pulled in front of me. <laughs> he pulled in front of me. <laughs> Call me Tom Chinaman. Fuck him. Oh. I'm, I'm like a fucking, like a, like an idiot comedy savant. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I'll admit it, bitch. <laughs> so what? It's like, how does he remember that? It's and then, like, I'm like that guy with them thick ass fucking glasses <laughs> and a permanent <laughs> smile. Right. Did right. they give a pin to him? Right. right. People want to know how, like, people initially mm -hmm. thought you were actually planning the stories that you were going to tell. Yeah. And it's like, no, no, no. So that's like people, when we had to make clear that when you did. That was off your dome. That was your no, uh, that yeah, it was that was, that was off your dome. What we got to do, people, is we got to diminish the <coughs> image of the black people on a mass level. Mm -hmm. Now, if, now we're going we're going for the juggler on this. We're gonna we're gonna you guys, aka pack of niggers. <laughs> that's that's this is Operation Pack of Niggers. <laughs> quite blatant, quite blunt, because that's what it's got to be. We're going after the happiest place on earth, and we're going to have a pack of niggers disrupted. Hey, come on, come on, Darnell, tell me you can't use some cash, brother. Come on. And Nisi, I heard, I heard you were complaining about the, the gas money here. Nisi, come on. Are you with us? Are you down? You're gonna fall down. I don't believe you are. I don't believe you're gonna fall. If you did, put it this way. Hey, listen, Tad. Nisi says she's gonna fall down. And Nisi, if you fall down, we'll, uh, we'll throw on an extra. We'll, we'll throw on an extra three hundred. She fell down. Well, hell, can you, well, Doc, Doc Winikwa. Well, Doc Winikwa, if you wanna fall down, that's three hundred extra for you too. Now, Damien, where's Damien? Come here, Damien. Well, we're gonna do. We just want you to go buck wild. <laughs> uh, maybe I will tell you what. Now, where's Shanicia? <laughs> Shanicia. Okay. Now listen. How's that wig? Is it on good and tight? Plenty of padding underneath there. Now, Damon, I really want you to belt her. This hair. This is right off the Disney lot. It's right off the Disney lot. This is a stunt hair. <laughs> Where's the kids? Where's the little ones? Where's Kilo? Where's Kilo? Where's Jamonte? Where's Kilo? And Man Man? This is the Operation Pack of Nick. Quite blatant, quite blunt, because that's what it's got to be. I mean, hey, you know what? And, that, and this all goes back to fucking hip hop for me. Mm -hmm. I'm a freestyle artist. Mm -hmm. I I came up the 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 first thing I ever did in public uh, as alone mm -hmm. as just a solo person was freestyle. Mm -hmm. Freestyle in lunchrooms at, at school, cats beating on the table. Right. With the on on a, on a fucking lunch table, goo goo clack clack. Goo clack, goo goo clack, clack, goo clack. Yo, I've been going all day and all night. And if that don't work, then I'm down to fight. Might pull the heat. Or I might, you know, all of that was right, freestyle. Right, right. Yeah. With freestyle, number one, it had to be off the dome. Or it was not considered freestyle. Mm -hmm. Okay, you couldn't have some pre written shit and then come recite it. Yeah. That was not unaccepted. That, at this portion, of the display of this? Not the game. No, nah, not in the game. You had to come off your dome. Otherwise, who the fuck? Anybody could go write a poem and come back and recite it. Yeah. That's how we were looking at it at that time. Mm-hmm. All right, but freestyling, you know? Yeah. It but was, then it's, uh, so when I approach comedy, it's like, yeah, I do have a lot of written material that I do. We're great, 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 great. Because I can write, okay. But I always, always, always dedicate a portion of every single 
on stage performance of me, a portion of it, I'm going to give to the freestyle, just mm -hmm. off the dome, what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hey, I, I tribute. I had people that let me know that. Eddie Griffin let me know that. Hey, that's cool to do that. It's okay. You know, it may work, it may not. That's the risk. That's And that's what you get. When you do it in that manner for me, right. that's what I'm addicted to. That's what I'm hooked to. That's my shit. I mm -hmm. love that. So this show for me, huh? <laughs> what? Right. Just yes. come and smoke weed and talk and get high? Right. And let you motherfuckers know, really? Right. How I feel on some shit? Right. And, hey, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to make anybody believe or think like me. All I want, motherfuckers, for you to think. Yeah. If more people thought, the world would be a better place. Yeah. Just fuck the program, man. Fuck yeah. the reaction. Right. Yep. If right. we react, well, all we do is react, 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 react. Mm, exactly. You know, show us a picture of this, we react that way. Show us a picture of that, we react. Yeah. Fuck all that reacting. Stop. Think, man. Right. And, you know, motherfuckers will see, even say something, oh, that's dangerous saying that. Fuck out of here, dumb dumb. Nobody worried about us. Someone who's not thinking would say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone who's not. I'm just saying. Right. Think. Just stop and think for yourself. Well, okay. So. And that's what our show does. That's it what does. You, it makes you think. You know, think. I think. We get interaction. <laughs> yeah. We get we get the interaction from our chat room, and you know they they correct us, they inform us, they laugh with us. So I love the, the chat, chat room. room. Is, yeah, and they're like, so loyal. They're yeah. so loyal. I think that's been the biggest. That's surprise the, yeah. The chat room. Man, the chat room is, and, and I'm gonna be honest. They, hey, that was uh, a lot of fifty one fifty people. Inspired. Yes, and we appreciate that. Yeah, hell yeah. Yes, I love. I mean, this is all. It's all fair. Right. 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 But. You know, it's a difference. It's different shit. The Freeze Talks chat room is different than the 5150 chat room. And that's okay. As they should be. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So, what I've seen, when I be on 5050 chat room, I be seeing names that pop up on right, our right. chat room, and I be like, <gasps> <laughs> I'm surprised that this motherfucker says such fucked up shit. <laughs> They all polite yeah. on freeze talks. So, well, better right, go right, ahead. Right. Right. Who are you? And you see them on 5150, and that's why your mama suck dick. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I know. But I think that's really cool because they pick up the vibe of the show. Yeah. And, and, and it's our a chat difference. room will There's not room. let people come see, in and start talking is, shit, and I like that. They, what I love, they, and Zoe what? They people. So what show, and Giraffe Balls, and Mansions. Mm -hmm. All of these... What I what I what I love about all of this shit, eighty five South, um, what's the other one? Millionaires, the uh, the millionaire with with Gilly the Kid and um, um, fucking uh, Wallow, uh, Wallow, mm -hmm. is that I, is the, yo. This know. is a show out of Philly. This is uh, look them up. Them cats. There's a lot of shows that are out there. If I'm forgetting somebody, please forgive me. I don't mean nothing. But also my uh, my man um, that was just on fifty one fifty. Yeah, Gilly the Ryan. Kid and Wallow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are all different shows. And what I like is it's healthy. This is what is beautiful. This is There's room for difference. Yes. It's supposed to be different. It's healthy to be different. We don't want to all be the same thing. Exactly. And we're not. Nobody is. Everybody's doing what they do. And it's just, it's cool to see this, especially for me. Especially for you, because yeah. we know what the fuck it is. It was not able to. You were not able Somebody to see. Somebody else was deciding for you what they decided you, black people want to see or right. uh, Mexican people want to see or whatever. Or what Asian people, people want to see. see. Right. I remember when Joy Luck Club was the only Asian shit out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fucking ridiculous. M meanwhile, there's masterpieces that are made by Japanese filmmakers. Yes. That the world don't know. You know what I'm right, saying? Exactly. It's like, yo, man, they marketize us so fucking mm -hmm. fucked up. They categorize you. Yeah. They put your ass, and then they sell to you. This shit is grimy. So, so the internet 
just blows it that shit away. It removes the gatekeepers out of the way and all the bullshit. You know, people can do what they want. But, okay, we, we really appreciate everybody being here. Thank you. Um, we really appreciate you guys holding us up. And you yep. can see we've evolved. I mean, we started off with our little bitty microphones. And because of the support, we've been able to get more microphones, more cameras. And, and we're really looking to step it up next season. Uh with some real fun stuff that we're we'll gonna be bring about. in some jugglers, yeah, yeah. and the clowns. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna bring in little people, little people, little people. Midgets is. Well, I'm gonna bring expensive. in a midget. That don't. I'm gonna bring in a real fucking midget, and he's gonna say it. Yeah, motherfucker, I'm a motherfucking midget. Yeah, and I whoop any one of you little people's ass. I'm a midget. I like being a midget, motherfucker, because I'm the midget that'll fuck anybody. You know, they got midgets that. You know, like they got black people that are niggas and tell you, bitch, I'm a nigga and I love being a nigga. Okay, that don't mean that all black people are niggas, but there are black people that prefer to be niggas. Well, there are little people that prefer to be midgets. And that's just... Just like there's gay people out there that probably prefer to be fags. Yeah, Don't oh, tell yeah. me they ain't. That's I true. see these niggas in Brooklyn. I know. These niggas with some big, swole-ass fucking transvestite niggas. By in Tompkins Park, oh. yeah, you don't you want to go talk to them niggas? Because when those motherfuckers got on the train, Jack, man, I was looking straight ahead. <laughs> yeah. They was in that corner, lot. Yeah. yeah, motherfucker, they was all. They was like, wow. They was like, yeah, I'm a fag. I'm a fag. I dare you to call me one though. Look at me, motherfucker. I was. They weren't talking to me. me. Like, they were not, not talking not, to me. Uh, right. I, I was. I was a fucker. You said not me, not today. Oh. I'm right, that motherfucker like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> It's all going, la, 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 la. And what the fuck is you looking at? Oh. And you know, you say you hear a couple of dumb motherfuckers like, yo, fuck all that. Right. You motherfuckers is fags. You got damn right, and this fag will cut you. I'll fucking gut you and butt fuck you, son. Oh, oh my God. Yo, yo, why? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yo, yo, yo. You hear all of that? Like, yeah, you see? You should have left him alone. You should have been like this. <laughs> Right, man, leave them alone, man. That's what they like, man. That's, let them like it. You don't have to. Who the fuck are you? That's why, yo, that's why I love it, Mrs. Subway. Cause that's the fucking common denominator. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You're going to act right on the subway. You're going to be dealt with. You're There's a crazo right. that is ready for your ass. Right, right, right. Shake it up, town. Yeah. I, a lot of people know who I'm talking about. This crazy Jamaican lady would get on the fucking train. Uh-huh. And she would be like, and all you Fucking whores. Oh. All of your whores, you're going to shake it up town. All of your little, little puppets, go and shake it up town and dance for the white man. You political puppet, yeah. And you, you big Dominican. That's what she said to me. I would be like this. <laughs> you big Ross clad that men I can. <laughs> you think they gonna get away? You black, you black. <laughs> Shake it up, town. You black, and I'll be like, I am black. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the way to get rich. <laughs> but I learned how to do this. Just, just roll with it. Just rock. Look straight ahead. Focal point. All right, yeah. so that's going to do it for this anniversary show. Um, enjoy the clips. Of course, I don't know where the No, fuck that's okay. But it's, that's it's, the beauty of our show. That's the beauty that's of That's the show. structure it's of that it. that structure yeah. that you You got to ride it out, see it all the way through. Right. So, but thank you for saying that, though. I don't I don't want you to think I'm mad that you said that. It's no. It's all cool. Not at all. No, I, I, I still, I got love for you. Don't. Love. And don't, don't, look, man, you got to have tough skin over here. I'm going to tell you that now. Right. And nobody ever mad at nobody that leaves a comment on here. No, even not, the, yeah. Even you dumb motherfuckers. Yeah, right. <laughs> you no, know, I said dumb, dumb motherfucker got to have a place yeah. to fucking tap his and everybody little words will, out. And everybody responds in kind, so, exactly, right. and makes, yeah. it, makes it clear that we didn't appreciate it or it's not. But anyway, okay, so we're going to be doing some cool stuff coming up with um, the next season. So actually, is this like the end of our third season? We're going to mark it? I don't know, but we're not really at 320. 
So we're still yeah. in the third season. We um, we'll be here next week. Send us your businesses, um, which that's one thing I'm about to show. I really love, and we're going to start that directory. I love being able to share information about everybody's work and what you're doing. And, son. Yes, V Man's son. Yes. Uh, okay, yes. so he he did um, respond and say that his son is going to recover. Um, he had uh, was shot in the stomach. His intestine, I guess, was. Uh, injured he's gonna have to have a colostomy bag for a little bit but he said his son is going to recover and that's really the main thing and um i appreciate like he just said he appreciates the fact that everybody who did respond a lot of love um and yeah yeah, i mean and just just that energy going forth you know that could have you know in some way helped and in yeah, everything I it for the make, I mean, turning everything know, for the better. And you know, and I remember someone had a real silly yeah. comment. But look, listen, man, this is one thing. Don't ever, I'm never worried about somebody um, faking or being, faking or anything. Because yeah. see, this is the thing about love. When you give love, it, it, there's an abundance. Mm-hmm. Love is an abundance. You can never ever run out of love to give ever anytime you give love it automatically comes back tenfold yeah don't ever worry about somebody faking sympathy or somebody pulling the wool over your eyes to receive love what do you give you give them love give them love anyway give them love anyway you got love to spare that's how much love it is yeah it's abundance tap into the love man love is the strongest thing out here. Amen. Always. Amen. Don't ever be confused. Don't don't ever go by the dumb fucks that tell you haters. Man, fuck that. Right. Love, love my nigga. Love. Love. <laughs> love will have a mother flipping over a motherfucking VW bus right. to get her baby out. Mm-hmm. Love will have a fucking man slap the shit out of a lion. Mm-hmm. to save his family. He may get killed. He may stand there fighting and get killed. But that's love. Right. There's love. Love is, is the strongest thing. As human beings, that's the strongest thing we can emote. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's effortless to give. We give love. That's why whenever you see somebody who's so-called um, uh, mentally handicapped or, or mm-hmm. something or, or, you know, don't fall for that. Those are angels that have the ability to give huge amounts of love with a glance. Because yeah. mm-hmm. they're pure love. So it's love out here. You got to tap into the love. Don't worry about the fucks. Right. The negative. Because guess what? <laughs> if somebody is stooping to that level to get fake love, they need it. Right, exactly. Man, either they need either it. way, you needed it. <laughs> you needed it. What, so exactly. Either way, right. We all come up. Yeah, man. love, not judgment. And um, yeah, so, so you. glad V Man Son is, is going to recover, and we'll keep yes. sending that good energy and those Send good vibes. Prayers, man. Um, absolutely. And we will see you all next week with another episode of Freeze Talks. Uh, yeah. Moving into year two. What? Year two. We got some shit for you. We're going to have some into fun. Into year two. We got some shit for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they do on Freeze Talks. Freeze, free, 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 freeze Talks. Bitch. Did you think? Yeah, we do. We do. We do need to do it. It's, it's coming to that time. Yeah. Freeze Talks. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to choose another. Mm. When we start the new season, I was gonna, you know, do some new graphics and all that shit. You know what? We're gonna see. I want, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm, my man Keon hit me, so I'm gonna see what he's talking about right now. Because we can do that. I think I'm gonna do a, a couple, but I know whatever the fuck it is, it's got to give you that feeling. That, that you know what I'm saying? It's certain shit out there that just you hear, and it's like boom, boom. What are you talking about? Open to the show? Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Did you see the Motown thing? Which one? The documentary of Motown? Oh. The new one. Barry Gordy and Smoke. That's what they call it. Oh, okay. And they were talking about how Barry was straight 
you don't get me in the first three seconds for the group, and so then you start thinking about all the little down here. Oh, okay. My girl. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, all the yeah. shit. Hey, man. You hear a hit in the first few seconds. That's the same way we did on the radio with sandwich. Yeah. I mean, there's still some. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. Oh, man. Yo, man. man. There's some hey, motherfuckers. Everybody go down the list of Motown songs. Yeah, dude, this is, we're going to do something this soon. It's got to capture something. It's got to capture the, the mood of the show. Yeah. Now that we actually have... There ain't going to be no goddamn Jeep Funk. I'm going to tell you that now. 